Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. The United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. Remember these words of wisdom. Practice makes perfect. So be careful what you practice. And remember this, the rabbit foot didn't work very well for the rabbit. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Good morning. I love that lady. Good morning, good morning on a Tuesday, the last Tuesday, actually the last day of September for this year, September 30th. Good morning, I'm Zeb Bell at Zeb at the Ranch, and our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And then also, do not forget some of our great advertisers, including Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. And get on the rod service, get rid of your garbage, 734-6969. Lovely lady, the old Beetle driver. Here she is. Good morning, Gina. Oh, did you uh, see the picture that I sent to you yesterday? It's kind of a classy little dude. Isn't it? Yeah. I've been driving it around trying to uh, work out the bugs. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah, Yeah. I practice on that pun. So, uh, but... uh, it's, it's coming along quite nicely, so I think it'll actually be ready to go uh, this weekend, and then her dad can finish off everything else. There you go. Hey, by the way, did you happen to look at the paper that I told you about? I did, and I'm not sure exactly which story you're talking about, but I found two different ones. Okay, well, I, <laughs> I'll talk about it in just a few minutes. Okay. Uh, do we have a pledger? We have Rotten on for the pledge, and Mr. Michael Rogers on for the weather. Very good. Rotten, go ahead, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I thank you, sir, and God bless you and your wife. Have a good day, okay? We will. Thank you very much. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, let's not mince any words. Let's get right to the weather. Brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. And uh, Whitney's been busy all this past weekend putting out new Halloween and Christmas decorations. Yeah, you got to stop in and see her artistic ability. And she's got a shipment of repurposed dressers coming in. And they're going to be at the craft fair over at Rupert High School in October. Oh, my goodness. You better get on in. They're closed on Sunday and Mondays, but stop in any other day. They'd love to help you. Look for the blue door, Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Michael Rogers Weather, good morning. Good morning. That yucky weather is going to be skedaddling out of here uh, later on this evening. A little bit after supper time, then you got a nice day for tomorrow. So what does that mean for today? It's going to be a little bit yucky, cloudy. Uh, the good news is the cooler temperatures... You're going to sit up and kind of stay in the 60s, low 60s for today. That's not cold. That's kind of comfortable. But by the same token, the yucky weather will leave, and you're going to see nice weather, a lot of sun, very little clouds all the way through the weekend. Have a great day. Enjoy the weather. Feel the weather you got. The best. MichaelRogersWeather.com. Thank you. Brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for their blue door. All righty. Hey, by the way, Thursdays are sale day at the Burley Livestock Commission Company at the Burley Livestock Sale Yard, 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley. Number to call, 678-9411. Now listen, this sale is a ripping good sale with Mer 
serve May and Lance Udy and Cade Roggy, and they're just waiting to serve you. For consignments, call like that number I mentioned, 678-9411, or you can call Merv at 431-5735, Cade at 431-0074, and Lance at 431-4174. The sale that works for you, Burley Livestock Sale Yard at 1100 Occidental Avenue in Burley with sale at 1030 on Thursdays. Be there, okay? Um, let's see what else have I. Oh, the, I got to tell you a couple of informative little deals. Um, the sixth annual Magic Valley Sportsman's Breakfast is going to take place this Friday morning, October third at six thirty in the morning. Even old Kelton Hatch, they're going to try to get him out of bed to be one of the cooks. And that's over at the Jerome Regional Office at three twenty four South four seventeen East Highway ninety three. They're going to have pancakes and eggs, and it's free. Stop over and enjoy, and they're. Gonna going to be discussing the upcoming hunting seasons. Don't miss that. Hey, uh, Daryl's Cleaners. Now, when you're looking for a cleaners that really cares, and you're looking for a cleaners that can get the job done, and get the stains out, and get the rumply crumplies looking brand new, look no further. They are the best. I swear by them. Uh, all the folks over there are really good friends of mine. Daryl's Cleaners, 1223 Albion Avenue in Burley. And don't forget the uh, prepaid gift cards to give to somebody you love. Oh my, they'll love them. Daryl's Cleaners in Burley. You stop in and see them today. And there's another company that I want to acknowledge here this morning that uh, I absolutely, I am not the best at computers, but I'm learning slow but sure, but Deanne really relies on SafeLink Internet Services, Idaho's number one choice for wireless high-speed Internet, and uh, boy, I'll tell you what, they've got specials starting at just 1995 to get on their service, tell them Zeb sent you, no contracts required, no credit checks, order by calling 677-8000, that number again, 677-8000. Safe Link Internet Services serving you. Really, really nice people. All right, give us a call, 436 2244 1866 927 4587. I was talking to Gina prior to going on the air this morning, and I said, I cannot believe the Times News really, really stepped in it this morning. Gina, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, a girl. I'm glad because if you weren't, I wouldn't be. <laughs> but there's a story on the front page of the paper. I mean, the front page. And it says, anti-abortion group endorses Otter, lauds his record. Oh, okay. That was the story you were talking about. Yeah. And then they've got a picture of all three of the gubernatorial candidates. Mr. Bujak. Mr. Otter and Mr. Balikov. But they've got the names reversed on the pictures. Wow, somebody was paying attention before they went to print. How do they make such an inept, absolutely stupid mistake? They've got Balikov's picture underneath Butch Otter and Otter's underneath Balikov. You can't make a mistake like that if you're paying attention. Uh, no, you can't make a mistake like that. And maybe the uh, person who was actually laying the template wasn't either, number one, paying attention, or number two, doesn't really know the candidates. Yeah, but you know, and I respect what you said, but that's almost an easement for them to get off the hook. You can't yeah, possibly not, make mistakes like this if you proofread what goes on the paper. It's actually not allowing them to get off the hook because if they do their job properly, this is a fireable offense. Oh my goodness. And, and you know, I don't blame at all Butch Otter for his animus against the Times News, the way they have come out and absolutely tried to throw daggers at his back and everything else. And this is another reason. And quite frankly, it's not fair to Mr. Balikoff either. Well, no. It's I mean, if, if you're going to, you know, say, okay, hey, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so, and this is so-and-so, please get the names right. Yeah. Because, number, you are making, like, a grave mistake in print media. But this I is mean, for the I, governor. I, this it, is it, for it, the it, governor. It, if, if it was for a county dog catcher, you know, it wouldn't be as uh, serious, I wouldn't think. But how can you, a governor that has been a governor here in the state of Idaho for a long time, how can you absolutely make such a stupid mistake. 
having a high school kid work for you. It's Amen. Say against the high school kids, but yeah. having a high school kid work for you that just doesn't know the politics of, of the state. I just... Uh, Embarrassment. I, Embarrassment. It, and no kidding. And you know how critical I am of the Times News and their oh. op-ed staff. Well, you can't blame people for being critical of these very inept mistakes. Anyway... Uh, you can blame them because they need to be paying attention. They're in the media. They are in the news. Their job is to get the facts right, well, even if it is just a picture. And I agree. And you know something? Uh, not to elevate ourselves above anybody else in the media, but you know something? We check, double-check, and triple-check yeah. everything we put on the air in the morning. Yeah. And and you have even questioned sometimes things that I've said on the air and found out that it was the way it is when you check it on the computer or whatever. And I like that. I like yeah. that. But I'll guarantee you, I don't get up at quarter to four in the morning just for my health. It's to make sure that everything is done right and efficiently, and I don't see why other media can't. That, that's a stupid mistake. That should it never is, happen. It should never happen, and I'm sure that somebody is getting um, talked to this morning, I can probably guarantee. All right. Quick hey, phone call. I'll tell you what. Would you mind telling the caller I'll be right there? I've got to pay some bills here real no. quick. I want to remind everybody about uh, Scott Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service, 336 South, 450 West of Paul. Number to call, 438-2485. I'll tell you what now, Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service, they do a great job. And it's going to get colder. Yep, we're going down in the 60s, and then all of a sudden, one of these days, you're going to go, holy buckets, it's cold outside. And you don't want to freeze up those sprinklers. Then you've got problems. So make sure you get those sprinklers all blown out. Call them, 438-2485. Gano Landscaping and Sprinkler Service over in Paul, absolutely the best. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. It's been about four or five, six years ago. They called and wanted me to get a subscription to the Pravda. And I told them, I says, I will if you uh, can prove that you have a proofreader. He says, well, what do you mean? I says, well, I saw a paper about two days ago with one inch print. You spelled Utah, U-T-A-H-X. You gotta be kidding me! It was me. on the front page. I said, "Did that ever get changed? Did they? Did you guys have a read, uh, proofreader? Oh yeah, we got proofreader." I said, "Is it blind?" No. I said, "You better check his op optical nerves and see if they're working." You know, I find in the print media, everybody can make a mistake in any kind of the media, whether it's a journalist on television, the radio, or the newspaper. But continually to make mistakes like this, uh, and that's just one of many, uh, it just cheapens the entire process of having a local newspaper. Well, that's the reason I call Providence. I told him that right down. I says, all oh, you're putting that in the propaganda, and I says, it reads like Providence. Well, he didn't know what Trump there was. <laughs> Take a course and understand. Hey, thank you for your call. God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, I tell you what. I, yeah, I'm hard on the Times News because I don't agree with their op-ed staff on probably 90% of the stuff they put in there and other mistakes that they make. And this is one of them. I mean, they've got to clean up their act. Ramsey Heaney getting electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The number to call is 678-0459. Now, it's still hats off to farmers and they really appreciate agriculture and all that agriculture and farmers do in this area and they know you're in a hurry so if you need cord end fuses whatever just stop in throw your dirty old cap on the floor say oh, get rid of it they'll give you a brand new one along with some popcorn and a soft drink I'll tell you what at Ramsey Heating and Electric where they provide warm winters and cool summers Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley by the way too we also want to say with the cold weather that they are predicting, and I heard somebody the other night, and uh, I'll talk to Gina about this a little later, but I heard somebody saying the other night that October is supposed to be one cold dude. That's what they said, colder than normal. Well, at Valley White Home and Ranch, they've got all the winter globes in. And like I said the other day, I have the doggone this time trying to, my fingers have all been smashed and everything, hard to keep my hands warm. Well, they've got great winter gloves over there. And they got all your shop towels and all your rags, and they've got Ariad boots. I love Ariad boots for men and women over there. A great selection. All of this and more. And don't forget, winter is right around the corner. They've also got your wood pellets for your wood pellet stove over there. One bag or a ton. Valley Wide's the place to go. 910 South Oneida in Rupert. You stop in and see those good folks today. All right? Got you covered on that. Uh, 
If James Clapper, director of intelligence, now that's the key word, intelligence, is so doggone inefficient, why hasn't Obama and the others of Obama's underlings, why haven't they fired him? How does he keep his job? And I think, in my opinion, is that uh, Obama is so arrogant and has so much disdain for the tasks of being the president. I honestly believe, I really do believe this, after reading all the books about Obama, I've read probably 12, 13 books about Obama and his attitude, his upbringing, his education, his uh, lack of ever doing anything. I just honestly believe that this man is in a job right now that he would walk away from just like that. Just like that. Throw something in the briefcase and say, you're on your own there, Biden. But this man doesn't do what he's supposed to do as president. Here, let me just give you this. And this came out this morning. That every day... There are uh, what they have, a little itinerary of all the briefings early in the morning for the president when he gets to the Oval Office. And all these briefings, whether they're intelligence briefings or briefings on anything for his daily schedule, etc., they have people standing right there with the uh, tablets, the computers, the written form, etc., ready to tell him what happened overnight and or what's happening today. Now, Obama... And this is a fact, you can look it up, only attended, has only attended so far in his career as president, 42% of the intelligence briefings. Now, in comparison to George Bush, George Bush barely ever, ever missed a meeting. They said that he was so diligent on getting those intel briefings and meetings, he very, very seldom ever had a conflicting part of his schedule overlap so that he couldn't go to those meetings. So here is Obama attending less than half, and Bush very rarely ever missed one. And then Obama comes out and blames bad intelligence on the ISIS growth. Now, how inept is that? He's the one that missed the intelligence. And the intelligence people for the United States government, the White House, all these people are furious because they literally are being grabbed by the nape of the neck and thrown under a big bus. Wow, you didn't do your job. Oh, no, you're the one that caused the problem, not the president. I have said for a long time on this program, when you listen to Obama... And he is railing about how great something is. It's always I, 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 me, 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 I, I, I. But when there's a problem and there are miscues and ineptness, it's always they, they, they. Check it out. That's what he said the other night with CBS. Yeah. They miss this. Uh, James Clapper, director of intelligence, overlooked this. It's never we when it's a mistake. It's always they. Calls are welcome, 436-224-1866-927-4587. Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley. Oh, I love eating there. I'll tell you. Hey, by the way, I've got to tell you this real quick. We changed Lunch Bunch for the next month of October. Now, write this down. It is going to be on the 30th of October, and it's going to be a Halloween party. <laughs> Don't miss it. Okay? That's going to be on the 30th of October. Write it down on your calendar. But you can stop in anytime you want to to Denny's Restaurant, and oh my goodness, they've got a free Grand Slam breakfast for you. If you're celebrating your birthday, just show them your ID, and how I'm telling you, you can sit down and just really enjoy a great meal. You better believe it. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and or dinner. Everything is fantabulous at Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley, the home 
of Zeb's Lunch Punch. Hey, by the way, Cade Rocky called me the other day and he said, Zebra, we're going to have a great big community sale at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds Saturday, October 4th, starting at 11 o'clock, and they're going to bring down the gavel and start selling all kinds of vehicles and household goods and guns and some farm equipment, and they'll take consignments right up through Friday night the 3rd this week. And for more information, go to their website, RoggyAuctions.com, or call Kate at 431-0074 or Ron at 316-0318. Roggy Auction Community Sale this coming Saturday at, of course, the great big Minidoka County Fairgrounds. Okay. All right, give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. What do you think about this president passing the buck? And you know what he said yesterday? This just, I about fell right out of my geezer chair. He said, our economy is the best that it's been in decades. Now, chew that for a minute. Our economy is the best it's been in decades? You have got to be kidding me. With Let's start at fuel prices. They're up 300% from when this guy took office. Gas was under a dollar eighty five for a national average when he took over office. Woo! Caller, good morning, you're on the air. You is that me? I hope so, because I'm talking well, to you. Well, okay, you're kinda uh I can barely hear you, but then my hearing could be better too. Uh Partner, I got I got a suggestion here. I'm gonna be back on my soapbox now. Uh, they say uh, there's no way to control this idiot uh, that's supposed to be. He's not my president. He, he, he occupies the Oval Office, and shame on America for letting him do that. All right. They say it says, well, we can't do nothing. We're not in control. Okay. That's a bunch of hooey. Get Crapo, get Craig, and, and 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 get them to if they sit on their back and say there's nothing we can do, then there's nothing they can do. Yeah. They get out and get the the media's against them, okay, but they're not going to get any uh, notoriety. They're not going to get any uh, uh, push until they make some squeaky noises. I agree. And go after all they got it. They got to drop the papers and make the attempt. I have said for a long time on this program, and if you've been listening, you know this is true. I have said for a long time, I don't want to hear any politician get on my program, whether it's Simpson, whether it's Crapo, whether it's Rich, I don't care who it is, and say, I did this, I did that, I'm doing this. I want to hear a unified effort as to how they gathered in other senators and or congressmen, and we are trying to do this. That's where the power lies. It's in the we, not the I. Right. A committee, and and they get, they got to get, so you get ten of them. Well, out of these ten, they know one guy that's a weak spot on the other side. Go to work on. I agree. How, how else, you know, I mean, we got to, we elect them, and then we got to tell them how to do their damn job. I agree. How stupid are we? I agree, sir. God bless you for your call. I appreciate it. I got to do a hard break. Thank you, right. sir. You bet. I appreciate it. God bless you. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Nice man right there. Very nice. Hey, we've got to have the Capitol Press Ag Minute, and I'll be back in just a moment. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capitol Press, the West Ag Weekly. The investigation into the unauthorized release of genetically modified Roundup Ready wheat in Oregon last year has ended without any determinations about its source. USDA believes it was an isolated incident and none of the crop entered commerce. Testing has not found any genetically engineered traits in the U.S. wheat supply. Investigators were able to rule out several possible sources for the escape. About 13,000 pages of paperwork generated by the investigation will be released to the public with names and other personal information redacted. No enforcement action will be taken in connection with the Oregon incident. For the Capitol Press Ag Minute, this is Brandon Tenner. 
For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Oh my, the Snyder Surplus, it's not just army and hunting supplies. No, they've got plenty of that, but they're everything. They've got all kinds of new merchandise in their new building and great friendly service. You better believe it. They are ready to serve you. They've got lots of furniture, lots of desk chairs, lots of desks, and they've got bunk beds, and they've got well, they've got just everything over there. I suggest you just say to yourself, today's the day we're going to go to Snyder Surplus and check everything out at 112 South, 200 West of Rupert. 112 South, 200 West of Rupert, Snyder Surplus. You stop over and see those good folks today. Really, really nice. All right, give us a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I want to just say this, and, and you know I get really, really attached to my listeners, and I get really attached to my lunch munchers, and uh, with a note of sadness, but I also believe that she is in a much better place right now this morning, and we wish God's blessings to the entire family. And the passing of one of our lunch munchers was Betty Register. And I just say, rest in peace. God bless her and the family. And uh, as I said, with my faith, I believe that she is in a much more comfortable place and uh, absolutely enjoying eternity. So we wish her the very best. Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Did you hear this story about the White House intruder? Now, the plot thickens, and again, you and me were lied to. Oh, boy, were we lied to by the Secret Service. Uh, What happened, and this has been a couple of days ago now, a guy jumped the fence by the White House and uh, galloped right over to the White House. Now, we were told that the Secret Service, remember initially when the story came out, we were told, oh, well, they got the guy. They wrestled him right there on the lawn. Yeah, everything's cool. Not a problem. No, that's not true. This guy actually made it through the unlocked doors rambled through the green room, rambled through the red room, rambled down the halls, and missed the staircase of running upstairs where the family was. Now, one takes a moment to ponder, what in the world is going on with the Secret Service? I thought that the president, regardless of whether you like the man or not, was highly protected from kooks, crackpots, and crazies. But evidently that's not the case. I mean, a guy can jump over a fence. And I don't know what the distance is, probably, what, uh, 75, 80 yards, maybe a little more, to go to the White House? And he does. And he runs inside, and he goes up and down the hall, checking out all the rooms. He could have dropped a bomb in there. He could have dropped grenades in there. He could have had an AK-47. Where is the Secret Service? And I guess he assaulted and hit a female female service representative and kept on going. Well, maybe, like Laura Ingram said early this morning... They should forget political correctness, forget about having these sweet little ladies standing there acting on behalf of the Secret Service, and put some big six foot six, 300 pound dudes at the doorway that will absolutely mash your chops if you're able to get inside the building. But he knocked her over and continued running until finally others came to the rescue and got him. But that's security? That's security for the White House? That's security for the President's family and himself? In America? Holy buckets. Give me a call, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I'm telling you, folks, honestly, things have gone to... Heck, in a hand basket with Obama. 
I, I just can't believe this. It, it just it's boggling my mind. Three locations of Barry Equipment and Rental. Oh, man, they got the big man lifts. Yep, they get you way up in the air. Yep. And uh, they've got those big, tall man lifts, and they've got the nifty lifts, and they've got all the Coyote tractors. I'm telling you, they've got the aerial lifts, and I said the Coyote tractors. I flipped the page back over. And then, of course, great financing, great selection, and great people to work with at all three locations, Addison Avenue, Weston. Twin Falls, South Lincoln and Jerome and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley Barry Equipment and Rental nobody does it better than Barry does, okay good morning caller, you're on the air good morning Mr. Bell how are you? you know, oh well, I'm getting better every day, thank you Okay. Um, you know maybe this is a sign for Obama to pull his head out of his rear end uh, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. Well, if he if, if he has his head in that uh, certain part of his anatomy, how's he going to read the sign? Yeah, well, you know, maybe he's ambidextrous. <laughs> I don't know. I'm being facetious. But, you know, I mean, it's it's just it's appalling. Um, I wouldn't wish that on any child to have to go through that. But it's his own dad gun fault. Yeah, but Donna, wait a minute. Come on. Think of think of the prestigious position of being the president. Think of the allure of people to say, oh, there he is, there he is. And think of the allure of taking a tour of the White House and everything. But knowing now that through this ineptness, I mean, this man didn't attend only but 42% of the intelligence meetings. The White House has been besieged by a guy that wants to jump a fence and just kind of take a running tour and he could have dropped anything as a bomb is concerned. This is complete ineptness and am amateurism on behalf of this administration. Yes, it is. That's, that's what I meant. You know, if, if he would take uh, accountability for his failure to be a leader, um, maybe things would change. You know, sir, I, I know a lot of the, the veterans do not respect this president. They respect the office. And they'll they'll give their you know their last breath to protect the freedoms that we have, but they do not respect the man that holds that office. Well, and uh, such could be said. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, bad personalities involved in politics, and there's a lot of people that are not very likable. And it was really interesting the other day, Donna, that uh, a couple of people that remained nameless uh, that worked for the Secret Service, uh, they said that uh, one of the duties that they concern themselves with that is like a, a degradation to their job is guarding Hillary. They said that Hillary is absolutely one of the worst people with her mouth, her put-downs, her snide attitude. They hate absolutely protecting Hillary. And those are stories you don't hear about. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I think more people need to hear that before they go to the voting booth. Amen. Um, you know, this, this country is going to, pardon my expression, hell in a handbasket. And we can't do a bad gum thing about it. We're just innocent people who have, I mean, we have a voice. But who the heck listens? But how, how do you feel as an American citizen that gets out of bed in the morning, has a cup of coffee, turns on the television or the radio, and finds out that the president didn't even know about ISIS, didn't really know about their growing cancerous and very treacherous approach to the world because he only attended 42% of the intelligence briefings and didn't really read anything that was given to him? pretty sad, isn't it? But you know, I have my own opinion about that. He doesn't want to defeat these people. He does not want to defeat ISIS or ISIL or whatever they want to call themselves, or the Al-Qaeda. He's, he's, he's armed these people, Zeb. I... People don't realize, you know, that some people have blinders on. This man is evil. He is evil. If, you're, if you're looking for an argument... You've come to the wrong place. <laughs> no, I wasn't looking for an argument. I was okay. just stating my own opinion All and right. you know what they're like. All right, Donna. God bless you. Thanks so much.
I appreciate it. Thank you. I agree with her. I do. I just, I've never trusted this man. Hey, caller, I'll be right there. Don't forget Sophie's Shatterbox, 530 East Street on the square on Rupert. Oh, my goodness. Can they bake things like cookie bars, homemade bread, wedding cakes, and cinnamon rolls? Have you had one of Sophie's cinnamon rolls? <laughs> it's a meal. It's a meal. You're going to love it. I'll tell you what. Just call and order some at 436-0354. 436-0354. And Sophie's Shatterbox open at 530 East Street on the square in Rupert. Food is really good. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Hello, sir. Even as we speak now, on Fox News, they have Mrs. or Miss... McPherson, I think is how you pronounce it. Yes. Is the head of the Secret Service. Yep. Anyway, she's in there saying, do you Skype cross the fence, I guess, and come in? They Secret Service met him at the door, and that's kind of the end of it. Uh, that's not true. Uh, they did not meet him. Yes, they met him at the door. A female staffer of the Secret Service met him at the door, and he basically knocked her out of the way and kept on running. And he went through about three or four different rooms and two or three different hallways before finally he was subdued. So uh, as far as her trying to make the story more appealing for the American public, uh-uh, don't listen to it. That's, I, I, I believe you to... To be a man of truth. <laughs> well, I'm going. I'm going by newscasts that I studied and uh, uh, versions that were sent to me early this morning by the media centers back in New York and Washington D.C. And I have no reason to doubt those centers. And they even sent a map. I have a map here of uh, the internal components of the White House, the various rooms and hallways, and they showed where he ran to and where he was before they caught him. So why would these people that work for media think tanks, why would they want to lie about this kind of stuff? Yeah, the thing that disturbs me more than anything, Zeb, is that this is on Fox News. The only media that, that really you can halfway count on is carrying this. Now, it's not their props or anything like that, but they are carrying it to the public and let them swallow it. No, no, wait a minute. I disagree with you, Keith. Totally. And I'll tell you why. We're good enough friends, I can tell you this. I admire Fox for putting her on because she's going to hang herself because they were the ones early this morning that showed the map of the house and where the guy had run and everything else. And by putting her on, they're being fair and balanced about it. And they're letting her basically hang herself with her own story. She's been on there now about 10 or 15 minutes. Well, how great the Secret Service is. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I find this to be very interesting. And this whole presidency of Obama only attending 42% of the intelligence briefings. Wow, I don't know about you, but that bothers me. This man, like you were saying earlier, and I really listened to that intensely because it's so true. Everything that happened with a little bit positive was all about high, high, high. And then when it goes wrong, it's they. They. He does not take the blame for one doggone thing. You know, and he's thrown a lot of people under the bus in his administration because of that. And I'm I'm surprised anybody's even willing to work for him. You know, and, and I judge people, and, and you probably are a better person than I am, I'm sure. But as you're growing up and you make a mistake or maybe something was broken, you know, uh, first impulse, humanity always wants to chase the blame over to somebody else's backyard or blame somebody else. I have been around some really top-notch coaches and other people, especially some 
great uh, uh, ministers of faith that uh, have talked to me and, and really uh, told me that when you make a mistake, you're going to be a much bigger person if you just own up to it or take an assemblance of the blame, and you'll be that much better off. This man does not take any assemblance of the blame whatsoever, and he proved that talking about this intelligence, and James Clapper the other day with that interview with uh, CBS, when he came out, they, 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 and remember all of his speeches about how I did this, I stopped the war in Afghanistan, I went and got Osama bin Laden, I, 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 it was pathetic, Keith. I, I realize that, and this guy is so transparent. He said that he was going to have a transparent administration, and believe me, that's what it's turning out to be, because we can see right through him and all the stupid things he does. I agree. Thank you so much for your call this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Ah, uh, good friend right there. Appreciate his call. It, we better do a weather forecast. Oh, my goodness, Zeb, you're behind. Well, what else is new? We're going to talk about Nicole Obra, Mad River Laser at 502 East Street in Rupert. Oh, my. As a matter of fact, I'm going in there this afternoon, and I'm going to get some of my Zeb at the Ranch stuff, you know, my sweatshirts, T-shirts, caps, and everything. I've had just, honestly, hundreds of people say, why don't you have sweatshirts or T-shirts or caps? for your program like they used to. Well, I'm going to have them shortly, shortly. Well, you check out all the items, caps, water bottles, pins, knives. Oh, they got the buck knives over there. Mm -hmm. And the tote bags, everything at Mad River Laser. Mm, promotional items customized for you. 502 E Street in Rupert. And right now, here's Michael Rogers' weather. Hi, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zib at the Ranch. We had a shower as a taper off today, so that means we're going to have a nice day tomorrow. I have a nice day today, depending upon the shower itself, but uh, the yucky weather is going to taper off, and you're going to start to see a lot of sun, very little clouds all the way through the weekend, and to make it even nicer, you got cooler temperatures, 61 for the high today. So there you have it. Enjoy the weather. It's the only weather you got. All right, Michael. Thank you very much. Had a nice visit with Michael yesterday, later in the afternoon. Uh, don't forget, brought to you by Mad River Laser, 502 E Street in Rupert. We're going to be coming over this afternoon. Yes, sir, Bob. They've got all your promotional items made just for you. Mad River Laser. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. A few minutes ago, you asked a question. Where was the Secret Service? You remember? I did. That is where they got their name done from. <laughs> it is the secret where they're at. Uh, you know, Rotten, listen, um, I've always enjoyed having you be a part of the program and everything, and you're, you're very insightful, and you come up with some really good ideas. As an American citizen, and you've been here for a while, and you've watched and witnessed a lot of presidents and a lot of their, um, oh, the way they run their office, doesn't this concern you that there just seems to be a lot of Swiss cheese in this administration? It does. It very much does. And I think that they better get Obama out of there, and, but not put Biden in. Oh, boy. I mean, uh, <laughs> that would be a joke and a half, but nobody would be smiling. I'll tell you that. That's terrible. Joe Biden is uh, hes just a clown looking for a circus. That's all he is. That's it in a nutshell. All right, my dear friend. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you. You, you know, a sad story here this morning. I'll get to it in just a minute. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yes, yeah, Ed Bell. Yes, sir. You know, it's involving... They're doing a lot good over there. But before they win that battle and stop ISIS, they're going to have to put boots on the ground. They might as well face it and get it done. It's been that way ever since the beginning of time. What's cleaned them up and won a war? Yep. yep. It's been men fighting hand to hand, boots on the ground. And uh, what I want to see done when they send them over, I want to see Ber uh, Bo Bergendahl right in the lead with somebody to watch him see that he don't run away. There you go. There you but, go. Uh, Zeb, that's the only way they're going to close, stop uh, ISIS, is... Uh, 
to win and, and shut them down. All right, now here, I'm going to say this to you, Fred, and you, uh, former military man, you criticize me if you think I'm wrong. I have never been a big fan of Bill O'Reilly. I like some of his concepts, but I dislike many more. But I his, the same way. All right, but now, this is what I want to ask you. I honestly believe his idea about a mercenary army, whether it's 25,000 or whether it's 30,000 men, going over there, take off the gloves. There is no holds barred, and they go after ISIS, and they wipe them out. And I think it should be funded, like O'Reilly said, by a multi-nation force of paying the bill, and they tell these guys, go get them, and don't stop until the last boot has been put on their throat. That's what I think needs to happen, and that's got to happen on the ground. That's right. You got that right. Yeah, that would work. You know, anything to wipe them out, but they've got to wipe them out. But you know, Fred... I think they need one or two... Uh, why they're going to they're going to regroup? Yep. And Fred, the reason I say uh, mercenary army rather than our United States Army or our Marines, look at what's happened to our army. Look at what's happened to our Marines. Look at how they've been told to have one hand tied behind their back. Oh yeah. This mercenary army, you just tell these guys to go in and get the bad guys, and no rules, no regulations, just go get them like a junkyard dog. That's what's got. To happen. That's right. Yeah, they've uh, they've got to kill every one of them. Get them all. All right, my dear friend. God bless you. Thank you for your call. Amen. Thank Amen. you, sir. Very dear friend, Fred, uh, I'll tell you what, I, I, I relish the times that we had to go fishing. Those were good, good days. Thank you, Fred. Hey, by the way, a uh, big tire sale going on at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Oh, my! I'm talking all their tires are on sale for your cars, your pickups, your SUVs. And uh, you can go in and they'll help you get the ones that you need for your type of driving. Okay? And a lot of their custom chrome wheels are on sale, and you know they've got the best brake value promise in the industry with professionally trained technicians. Oh my goodness, these are good people. The best in shocks and struts, the best in front end alignments, the best in batteries. What are you waiting for? Why don't you just get in there right now to any one of the seven locations and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pauline and Twin Falls, and Randy on on Overland and Burley, your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Uh, Gina, get on the air with me just a moment, would you please? Okay. Did you hear yesterday when I was talking about that story, and it's a sad story. I mean, really, it, it just, it kind of pulled at my heartstrings this morning. They found the Arkansas real estate yeah. lady. You probably heard about that. Yeah, I read the story. Before. And they caught the guy that supposedly perpetrated the crime, but now the plot's even thickening a little bit more. I don't know if you knew this or not, uh -uh. but this bozo was standing in a bus stop, and there were some people that had seen his picture on the news and they looked at him and they started staring at him and he got real nervous and he took off running down the street out of the bus stop and believe it or not uh, some of the people from the bus stop started running after him and next door to the bus stop was a real estate agency and mo some of the realtors took off after him and they finally cornered the guy and caught the guy but here's where it's really stupid this guy was coming out of the uh, jailhouse this morning to be moved to another location and somebody from the press went up and started asking him questions and the guy's lawyer never told him to shut up Oh, goodness. And you know what he said? He sa They asked him a question, why did you go after this lady? And he said, well, she was a rich real estate broker. And then also they said, well, did you do it by yourself? And he goes, no, as if he's admitting the crime. He said, I had help, and he named the other person. Oh, I mean, I have God. never in my life heard an interview like that. Wow. 
he just he just totally did himself in, and his lawyer, who was uh, was his lawyer right there with him, and his lawyer didn't. I don't that. know that to be a fact, but there were a bunch of guys in suits around him and everything, and I'm sure he probably would have uh, had a court appointed attorney or some. This guy is not going to qualify as far as being the brightest bulb in the fixture. <laughs> <laughs> he just basically okay. What he did is he admitted his guilt, and and he named his accomplice. Oh boy! Way to go, dude! But you Way know it's so dude. sad, and and I want to put this warning on again. I really mean this. Yes. And it goes to ladies and gentlemen. If you're doing a sales uh, job and a performance to where you're away from your office and you're off by yourself, take care. And in women's positions of showing a house all by yourself, I really advise against that. I think it should be uh, kind of where you take a partner, you take somebody else in your firm. I just, this shows that you can't trust anybody. Well, and you know, I know a lot of women who do outside sales and I know a lot of women who actually do uh, real estate. Yeah. And it makes me want to call them up and say, hey, you know what, chick, I love you enough. Please be careful. Take somebody with you. And if you need a contact person, let me be your contact person, and I will make sure that you check in with me, and if I don't hear back, then, you know, I've got your back, and I will make sure that, you know, we get you help. Absolutely. This is so scary. This Absolutely. so scary on so many levels, and I'm glad that they caught the guy, and for better or for worse, I'm glad that he admitted to it. Well, I just want to put that warning out there. If you're showing a home or showing a property out in the rural area or whatever, just take somebody else with you, or, yes, you know, uh, like we said yesterday, give have all kinds of advance notice that you're going to be at this location, hopefully for that period of time, etc. And quite frankly, if you've got a chance to carry a concealed gun in your purse, do it. Also, here's another suggestion. Schedule uh, showing the home to two different people at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Totally, totally. Uh, you know, I, I just think that uh, any kind of safety valve should be yeah. employed. So, yeah. anyhow, I'm off my soapbox. Okay. We are so lucky, and Gina knows this, we have two international celebrities coming on this program at 9.06 and at 9.30. 9.06, we have Trevor Loudon from New Zealand. You've seen him on all the major news. Newscasts. And then at 9.30, Dr. Zudi Jasser. You've seen him on all the major newscasts. So we've got both of them coming up during the next hour right here at Zeb at the Ranch. God bless. We'll be back in six. And good morning. Gina, I'm assuming I'm back on the air, and evidently there was a little malfunction. Yeah, we are. We're experiencing some little difficulties, and I'm having problems getting Trevor on the air as well. All right. I'll just kind of hang tough here for a minute and do some commercials. And while we're waiting to see about Trevor Loudon, we're also going to talk to you a little bit about Western Way Services. Oh, my goodness. Yes, they are always at your disposal. You be sure and uh, give them a call, 734-6969. And... Uh, uh, they've got the dumpsters in various sizes, and if you're going to be cleaning out the basement or the garage or whatever, you just fill them up and call them, and they'll come and get them. You better believe it. And get on their route service, too, to get rid of your garbage. Western Waste Services, always at your disposal, 734-6969. And uh, I also want to say how blessed we are to have with us on this program, and they have been for a long, long time, Hanson Mortuary at 710 6th Street in Rupert with our dear friend Joel Heward, the manager. Family place and a family serving you and flexible hours. They will be there and talk to you when you need them. So please give them a call. They will go to you. That's right, in the rural areas, towns and churches. And uh, remember, they always uphold the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity serving you and your family when there's the passing of a loved one. So please give them a call. Handsome Mortuary. 710 6th Street in Rupert. Number to call 436 5636. Let's check over with Gina and see if we have our guest available on the phone this morning. I am still trying, but uh, we do have a phone call on the air. I'll take it. Thanks, Gina. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, good morning, Zeb. How are you today? Uh, I am fantabulous. Thank you very much. What can I do for you? Hey, I laughed out loud when I heard about that guy that got caught the one that they think killed that real estate agent uh, yeah he just kind of convicted himself <laughs> You know, it's not a laughing situation, and I'm not trying to, you know, make not you... To the, not no. to, the, to the woman, but to the fact that he 
was so stupid that he yeah. uh, you know, basically convicted himself. Yeah, and then he also brought into play the fact that, uh, you know, I mean, he... he, he <laughs> yeah, the accomplice, another person and everything. I have never in a long, long time seen anybody leave the confines of a jail and have a reporter ask questions, and they basically were giving out all the information. The only thing he didn't do is tell them where he had supper the night before. And just that. Yeah. Well, I, anyway, I just wanted to give you another that. And, you know, there may be somebody out there that could, uh, some entrepreneur could uh, start a security, you know, uh, escort service or something for the uh, real estate agents in some of these larger cities if they feel like they may be in danger. Uh, and not a bad thought. There's got to be more protection, and I honestly feel like the teaming up the buddy system would defray a lot of this problem. Sir, thank you very much for your call. I appreciate it. God you bless you. Have a good day. Yeah, I just uh, can't stress enough how dangerous I think it is for some of these people, whether they're in the insurance business, traveling late at night, or going to a late night appointment, or going by themselves, or a real estate agent. Please, after this story... Uh, take every precaution that you can. While we're waiting to see if we can get Trevor Loudon on the line this morning, don't forget Let's Ride. Oh, boy, they've got all the snow machines for you over there at Let's Ride. I'll guarantee you, if you're waiting for the angel dust dandruff to hit the hills, then they've got the snowmobiles to have a lot of fun. they got brand-new snow machines in stock and all the accessories, too. So, oh, by the way, there's still plenty of time to go ATV in this fall. Oh, enjoy the fall colors up in the mountains. I'll tell you, they've got all the ATVs, all the sizes, and again, all the accessories over there at Let's Ride. Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, where the fun is sold. Uh, not looking good, huh, Gina? Um, I've tried twice, left two messages. I'll continue to try. Maybe if Deanne could get a backup number... But uh, I'll just continue to try. She just barely got home, walked oh. in the door not more than 30 seconds ago. Uh, Deanne, we're not having any luck with Trevor Loudon, and we don't have a backup number. Do you have any access to any backup numbers or anything that you can check on? And uh, I'll tell you what, Gina, um, would you mind trying this, okay? Okay. Um, I'm going to put this guy on the spot this morning uh, because of a very, very serious story that was in the newspaper this morning about farm pharmacies on high alert would you try this number i'll just give it to you right over the air 733 it's a twin falls number okay 9242 and ask for kent if you would please okay we're going to put him on the spot on the air live and see what happens here this morning with pharmacy allison the tech speaking hi allison the tech speaking this is long distance and you're on the radio with zeb bell i need kent right away is he there yeah, absolutely. One moment. All right, go Gallup. Get him. Thank you. Hi, this is Kent. Kent, you're on the air. Zeb Bell. Hey, Zeb. Uh, the reason How are you, sir? I am fantastic, and the reason I called you is this. I was expecting a long-distance call with Trevor Loudon from New Zealand and uh, talking about his new book called The Enemies Within, and we're having trouble getting Trevor on the line. And after I saw a newspaper story this morning about Twin Falls Pharmacies on high alert, you came to mind that you might be able to shed some light. What is going on with all the robberies at pharmacies in Twin Falls? Well, I, I don't think it's just Twin Falls. I think it's all over. Um, we probably hear more about it here. But um, there's a lot of people that are, that are hooked on narcotics. And those people will pay big money to get their drugs. If they can't get them uh, through a physician uh, the normal way, uh, then they have to resort to the other way. And um, oxycodone seems to be the high, um, high demand uh, drug right now. And why is that, Kent? Let me ask you a question there. Why oxycodone? Why, why is that drug so popular? Um, it's very potent. Um, it um, is very addictive. Uh, it's very good for pain, but if it's not managed well, and people who have uh, addiction problems, 
uh, get a hold of that. They think it's the neatest thing since sliced bread, and they will do anything to get it. Mm. Right now on the street, it goes for about a dollar a milligram, so somebody can come in and get a um, regular prescription for 100 of those, a 30 milligram, mm -hmm. and 100 times 30 times 30. They could sell that for nine hundred dollars. Oh my goodness sakes! How serious is the situation in Twin or other pharmacies in other towns right now, as far as some of these robberies and and some of them armed robberies? Uh, what are your concerns as a pharmaceutical owner? Well, um, our first concern, of course, is for the safety of our of our. Uh, of our employees and the customers that might be in the store during a robbery. Um, we had a break-in um, a few months ago, and that's what they took. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, smashed a window, came in, grabbed their, their drugs, and were out in 23 seconds. Oh, my. 23 seconds. Yeah. Beg your pardon? I said 23 seconds? Yeah, they had they had cased it. They knew exactly where it was on the shelf. They knew where all the cameras were. I mean, we have the guy had a mask and a hoodie and gloves, and of course, there's you know going to be no no identifying them from that. Uh, but the amount of the amount of you know drugs that um, they can steal and throw in their pocket. Uh, in a short period of time, they can live on for six months. What is the answer to this, uh, Kent, as far as trying to protect your employees inside the store with walk-ins that come up to the counter? Uh, you can basically just step away from the drive-in window. I don't see a serious hazard there, unless I'm wrong. But what about what's the, what's a store owner, a pharmacy owner, going to do with the walk-ins at any time of the day? What are some of the things that you can do and others can do to protect themselves well we have <clears throat> on our pharmacy we have nine cameras uh, three inside six outside you can't get to the pharmacy without being on camera now if you walk in with a hoodie and a mask you pretty well know what's going to go on mm -hmm. but um, our pharmacist uh, um, we carry uh, carry firearms I respect that. Now, I want to amplify on that just a little bit, Kent. Your pharmacists carry firearms. I think mm -hmm. that, uh, do you put a sign up as a deterrent and say that the pharmacy and the employees do carry firearms, or do you not have a sign up? They can just look on our hip and see it. And what has it's been the... What's it's not concealed carry, it's open carry. Right. What's been the general response from the public about the open carry? I'd like to know. Well, we get some remarks. What are you doing with that gun on your hip? And then you just simply have to remind them that how many pharmacies have been robbed um, in Twin Falls. Uh, and they understand, you know. Uh, if we can keep them away from our pharmacy, our employees are safer and our customers are safer. You know, what they, does... They know that they're going to come in and it's not just going to be a walk in the park. Right. Hand us a note and we'll just give them all our drugs. Kent, what does this say about our society now that people are becoming so much more blatant in their thefts of uh, broad daylight robberies of pharmacies? Uh, what does it say about our society as far as the need for drugs when some people have said that the drug problem per se has been lessened quite a bit? What are your thoughts on those subjects? Well, I'd say the drug problem right now is worse than, than I've seen it as my 30-plus years as a pharmacist. And as far as the <clears throat> what we have to do, uh, there's an old term, thin out the herd. Now, it's, time to, it's time to get rid of some of the scumballs that, that do this. Uh-huh. Uh, what... <laughs> What do you mean as far as thinning them out? How, you're talking about the bad guys and, and locking them up, or what are you talking about? Well, I, you know, locking them up doesn't do any good. Um, you know, they, I think it's going to come down to, uh, you know, uh, the civilization as a whole. Uh, maybe I'm making a stretch here, but how long can we keep going and putting more people on the government dole and uh, then taking 
uh, away from the people that are producing until the society fails. Right. And when society fails, then chaos ensues, and that's when you thin out the herd. You know, when you uh, talk about open carry with uh, your employees and some of the pharmacists carrying guns uh, as a deterrent, I absolutely applaud you. I think that if that is the position that we're put in now, you as the owner of that pharmacy, you're saying that you really truly value the health and well-being of your employees and you will go to any lengths to make sure that you, them, and your customers are safe while they're doing business in the store. I applaud you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other businesses and other pharmacies that you know of after there's been these uh, rash of robberies? Are they also contemplating perhaps uh, an open carry situation? Um, you know, there's only a few pharmacies that are independent that can make that decision right away. The big chains that are getting hit, the Kmarts, the Walgreens, the Walmarts, they'll never do that because they're, they're big corporations and they would never allow that to happen, I don't believe. Um, <clears throat> there, was a, there was an incident back, I think it was in the Midwest, where there was a, a pharmacist and uh, his employees and uh, the guy came in, uh, showed him a gun, got the drugs, um, and as he was going out, uh, there was a police cruiser just pulled up. So he went back in, took hostages. There ended up being a couple of them shot uh, and killed. And that, that's a real possibility. And, you know, you never know what's going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, <clears throat> myself, uh, years ago, was uh, had an armed robbery. I was leaving the pharmacy. Uh, Locked up after night, uh, at night, uh, went out to get in my vehicle, and the guy jumped out, stuck a gun in my face. We went back in, got the drugs and the cash that he wanted. The worst part about that is I felt helpless. Yeah. When we got finished, he said, we're going into the back room, and uh -oh. I could see myself back there getting a bullet in the back of the head, and I felt helpless. So after that, um, I got my concealed uh, carry permit and uh, have maintained that. Um, I regularly take classes in, in uh, uh, shooting and uh, keep up my proficiency. Um, and it's just, you, you never want to have that helpless feeling. Absolutely. You anything. Absolutely. Kent, I want to apologize to you for spur of the moment uh, putting you on the radio, but it was a story that I thought I really wanted to highlight, and I knew about the open carry at your business. And I say to you and the rest of the employees there, God bless you at KJ's, and thank you so much. I believe that my guest is on the phone long distance from New Zealand, and uh, we're going to talk to him quickly, but I want to say, Kent Jensen, God bless you for your help this morning. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, bye. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, quickly, with the time remaining in this half hour, we're going to say good morning to Trevor Loudon. Trevor, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning, Zeb. How are you? I am great. I'm sorry we had a little bit of a disconnect as far as the time is concerned, and I want to get right into what uh, the gist of what I wanted to visit with you about. First of all, you've got a book out called The Enemies Within, and it talks about communists, socialists, and progressives in the United States Congress. What do you mean? You're not going to try to tell me that our wingtip shoes and three-piece suited friends in Congress might not be going for the Constitution of the United States, are you? Oh, is that, that would shock you to the core, wouldn't it, Zev? Well, tell you us... Know, tell us. Know, while I'm saying a lot of these people in three-piece suits and designer, designer suits, you know, 15 or 20 years ago were street radicals who were marching with the communists. And a lot of them that were... Well, basically what happened in this country in 1995, the Marxists, the communists, Democratic Socialists of America... They took over the unions, the AFL-CIO. They got rid of Lane Kirkland, the old anti-communist, and they put their Marxist friend John Sweeney in as president. So they took over the, took over the labor movement at the top levels, and then they took over the Democratic Party, and uh, they've been electing their sympathizers and secret members and covert communists into your Congress ever since. 
Trevor, when you look at the situation that we're in right now with this administration, and every day is a new horrific experience, every day that shows the ineptitude of this administration and what they're not doing, how concerned are you for the security of the United States of America? Well, look, the, the key words you use there is ineptitude. There are still people out there who will say this is an incompetent administration. It doesn't know, understand national security. It doesn't understand domestic policy. I say completely the opposite. I say it's a very competent administration, but its, it's agenda is anti-American. Its agenda is to destroy the American economy effectively, destroy the American military, and render your national, national sovereignty void. So, no, I think they're doing a, very, a great job, actually, you know, from their point of view. And I, I'm very concerned, but I'm also concerned for my country because every Western country, every ally of America is freaking out right now because they see that your president is doing everything to empower the bad guys, the Russians and the Chinese and, and radical Islam, and is basically blowing off his allies. So America's security is in grave danger, but so is every other Western country. You know, Trevor, when you look and hear the news this morning, and it was estimated that Barack Obama has only attended about 42% of the intelligence uh, briefings every morning. Uh, the previous president, George Bush, rarely ever missed an intelligence briefing. And then Obama throws Clapper and the rest of these people under the bus and said that they missed ISIS. They missed the threat. This man will not take the blame for anything. The next two years look very scary, do they not? Well, they certainly do, because you can see that if you look around the world right now, you know, China is expanding its power by building a big blue water navy in the Pacific that's threatening Japan. You've got Iran clearly intent on taking over the Middle East um, and uh, destroying Israel. You've got Syria and ISIS, you know, Syria and Iraq dissolving into chaos. And you've got Russia clearly intent on reestablishing its empire, starting with the Ukraine. So you've got all this going on, you've got flashpoints all over the world, and Obama plays golf most of the time. You know, do you think any of this chaos would be happening if you had a Reagan-type president in the White House? You know, Trevor, in just a few moments at 9.30, I've got Dr. Zudi Jasser coming on my program from down in Arizona. Oh, yep, yep, I know, yep. And uh, I'm going to ask him about the Muslim influence and the growth of the uh, Muslim extremists, not only across in the Middle East, but right here in this country, with the lone wolf attitude as to what we saw in Oklahoma. How concerned are you of the Islamic threat in this country, United States, and what the lone wolf attitude might do? due to the general populace. Yeah, well, look, look you've got to realize this is not lone wolf stuff. It is, it is to a degree. But you've got to also realize that radical Islam is basically a tool of the Russians. The KGB is behind a lot of what we call, the old KGB is behind what a lot of what we call radical Islam. So you've got the copycat thing going on that, you know, people are getting the idea that cutting off people's heads is a, is a, is a fun thing to do. But really, the, the bigger movement, radical Islam, is, is used by the Russians to take this country down. So you've got to focus on the main enemy, the Russians, who have 8,500 nuclear weapons and control, control what, what we call radical Islam, not get diverted into the, into the minor issues. You know, it really is the, it's the, the Russians that we need to concentrate on they control this stuff. All right, now your book, The Enemies Within. I'm almost out of time on this segment, but tell me quickly, how's the book going, and w can it be obtained at all major bookstores? No, not really the bookstores. They won't stock it, but it's uh, available on Amazon, Kindle, or Nook, and also through our website, Pacific Freedom Foundation. We're also doing a movie of the book, and that's we're doing crowdsourcing funding, which is going to start this afternoon. And that's at um, Indiegogo, the crowdsourcing website. You just go there and uh, type in, in, in The Enemies Within. That's the name of the movie. And we're appealing to the public for help to get that, that, that underway. 
I tell you what, it'll be live later on this afternoon. All right, now, Trevor, what I'd like to do is I will keep in touch with you for a longer segment. I say God's blessings and thank you for your due diligence in coming on this morning. I appreciate it, and I'll tell everybody to get the book, and we'll talk more about it in the future. Thank you so much. Yeah, look, look we will. I'll be in Idaho soon, so look forward to it, Jim. Yes, thank you yes, very bye. much. Appreciate it. Thank you. As a matter of fact, Trevor Loudon will be speaking at the King's Little Theater in Burley on October 9th, and uh, put that on your calendar. I'm definitely going to be there, and uh, you will find him to be a very, very interesting individual. He's been on all the big newscasts. He's been on Hannity. He's been on all of them, and uh, we're looking forward to meeting him right here when he's in Burley on the 9th of October. Uh, i got to pay some bills quick, and then we'll go to our next guest. Don't forget our dear friends, Dean Cameron, Todd Siemens at Cameron and Siemens Insurance. And when you need life insurance, those are the professionals to work with. Everybody does. Don't put it off on the back burner. Just be sure and give them a call. And health insurance and retirement planning and employee benefits, they really are dedicated and responsive to your needs. So call them today, 436-4424. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Well, if you didn't hear that, then you'd better get a hold of Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids with Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology. Yes, the number to call, 312-0957. And don't forget, she has, like we've been telling you about, the shooter plugs. You can hear the animals up in the hills when you're hunting this fall, but the severe blast from the gun won't hurt your hearing. And she also has special earplugs for bandmen. Members. Why don't you check it out today? Call her, Christine Pickup, Doctor of Audiology, at 312-0957, 312-0957, Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Did you hear that? Okay. I believe we're going to go. Gina sent me another text. Hold on, I got to read my mail on the phone, and she says text number two. And me being so not ready to <clears throat> accept social media, sometimes I'm ill prepared. But I think I know the gist of the phone call, and we are ready for a gentleman that's been on our program in the past. And I'm looking forward to having him back this morning. Good morning, down in the land of sunshine in Arizona, Doctor Zudi Jasser. How are you, sir? Great. It's uh, good to be with you. Thanks for having me back. You know, it's always a pleasure to visit with you. Uh, I've watched you and listened to you extensively on most all the broadcasts. I watched you the other night on Hannity. You are a common sense individual, and uh, you have practiced your Muslim faith, and uh, the gist of what I'm hearing from you, Dr. Jasser, is that you are frustrated uh, with the way that the Muslim faith is being twisted and torn by the Extremists. Bring us up to speed as to your thoughts on this. Yeah, I think it's important to, as we continue to see this uh, uh, whack-a-mole uh, uh, recurrence. Uh, these are not random events. Uh, as a Muslim who loves my faith, but more importantly to our conversation here in America, I love my country. If we get the threat wrong, we're going to continue to be chasing our tails and uh, not treating the main condition. And um, our president, unfortunately, is focused on the, on the means. He uh, called it violent extremism, which uh, could be anything, uh, uh, let alone the threat that we need to address. And even with that, uh, the president uh, and media and others are too busy either calling this beheading workplace violence or telling us in U.N. speeches which Islamic imam I should listen to, which in fact was a jihadist, bin Bayah, that he quoted. So mm -hmm. everything is just so upside down. With it. We are entering a Cold War right now, which has been brewing over the past many years, I believe even before 9-11, since 1979, with the Islamic Revolution in Iran. And we see now there was an opportunity in the Middle East to fill the vacuum of um, the departure of some dictators with liberty. And unfortunately, that vacuum is getting filled with even a bigger threat, which is Islamism. And until Americans start to get their head around the threat, which is political Islam, and that's that solution, 
as my book says, is a battle within the house of Islam. Uh, we're going to continue to be chasing our tails for generations to come. Let me ask you a little bit more about that book. A battle for the soul of Islam and American Muslim patriots fight to save his faith. You must be extremely frustrated right now. And uh, why aren't all Muslims, all Muslims like yourself, outraged over the terror and death caused uh, by the extremists and the hatred that's being aimed back at you and others? Uh, as just being Muslims. They lump everybody together. Well, it's because the narrative is too easy to say, well, it's all just condemning violence. Uh, um, most Muslims, uh, you know, I've never met a Muslim that would ever even come close to thinking about doing what this Alton Nolan did or, you know, others have, uh, these radicals have done as their mind. Ultimately, they have a short fuse and that fuse gets lit. But well, what generates that fuse? That's the issue, is that it's not, these guys don't get radicalized overnight. This gentleman probably got radicalized initially in prison. I mean, Dal Hassan, who killed 13 and injured 31 in Fort Hood, he has a resume similar to mine, but somewhere over his time, he became radicalized. And I think a lot of the mindset within some mosques, within some Muslim organizations, is part of this global narrative, trying to demonize America, demonize uh, uh, those who take on Islamism as an ideology, and the, it's not only, you know, so what defines a moderate Muslim? It's not just those that condemn violence. It's those that not only condemn ISIS, the Islamic State right now, but condemn all Islamic State. We forget that America was created by founding fathers that wanted to uh, uh, find freedom, and they only could do so uh, 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 escaping and fighting against theocracy. Mm -hmm. Well, Islam, I believe, is in the same time in history, and that's the lens through which we have to see these these vicious barbaric groups that are coming out right now, is that it's, you know, Islam is in that time of history, and we need to take sides within the house, not say it's all a problem with the programming of Muslims, but take sides and say the, theoc the theocrats and the theocracy movements are huge movements in every country, and Saudi Arabia is no different than ISIS, other than they just uh, fly, F fly some of our jets and uh, give us hugs and sell us oil, but they do beheadings, they cut off limbs, they treat women as uh, citizens, and so many things that are an anathema to our way of life in the West. Dr. Jasser, with the encroachment like a cancer of ISIS uh, and the president saying that uh, he wasn't aware, he initially compared them to a JV basketball team, uh, now all of a sudden this thing has just encroached upon America and it's getting bigger and larger all the time. Has ISIS and Al-Qaeda gone too far and gotten too big for us, the United States, to try to rein them in? Absolutely not. You, you know, we have uh, the greatest military on the planet. Um, you know, the question is, can we do this operation without the, you know, boots on the ground? Uh, we already have intelligence uh, officers there. Uh, I mean, technically, if we're talking uh, force operations that are engaged on the ground, I'm not sure we need that in Syria because there is an indigenous revolution that is right now fighting two fronts. One, the Free Syria Army is fighting against ISIS, and they're fighting against Assad. And uh, ultimately, we can defeat this, but anyone who thinks that ISIS is an isolated threat that can be defeated by itself has no comprehension of what happened in Syria. We were talking about the fact that Assad is not only a threat because of his close relationship with Iran and Russia and uh, Hezbollah, but bottom line is, is, you think the operations our troops are doing now over Syria and Raqqa to destroy command and control of ISIS couldn't have been done by Assad in the past two years? He could have, but he left them alone and decimated in a genocide the majority of moderates in Syria. So ultimately, Assad, you know, will continue to allow the hydra of radical Islam to recreate itself over and over to legitimize the military you know, uh, oppressive dictatorship, as many of these Arab dictators in their manuals learned. And uh, so ultimately, this is the issue, is you cannot defeat ISIS without defeating Assad also.
Let me ask you this. Uh, the other evening, it's been about two weeks ago, Bill O'Reilly had a thought on his program about forming a mercenary army comprised of the best of the best from various nations and put those boots on the ground and basically no holds barred. Go get the bad guys. Well, is that the kind of an idea that would work over in this area with a mercenary army to eradicate or at least much lessen ISIS? Boy, you know, I'm not sure I know enough about what he's talking about, but that seems sort of like a, a, a way to cleanse what we're trying to do there by saying that, well, it's not really our guys, it's just mercenaries, and yet uh, just send them into there. I mean, that might seem right, but at the end of the day, you have to be able to have some sharing of intelligence, some uh, um, engagement with our military apparatus, uh, our Joint Chiefs, and others. And, you know, I'm not sure how you do that and then say that, well, whatever these guys do, we don't have any connection to, but yet they're going to do the right thing. I mean, I'm a former Navy guy, and, you know, I think that uh, when the U.S. military does things, we do it morally and we do it right. And, uh, you know, while that might be a easier, more antiseptic way to do it, uh, I'm not sure that's going to get us the result we want. Mm -hmm. because you know, today, uh, yesterday, I'm sorry, in the U.N., uh, Mualam, the foreign minister of Syria, was telling America to broaden the, the, the targets, to start hitting all of the free Syria army. I mean, now, you know, so, so the question is, is we need to be open and transparent about, yeah, there, there are very many elements within the free Syria army of jihadists, but also the majority of them are good folks. So we should be transparent about how we do that and not uh, covert. Dr. Jasser, are you concerned, and I've talked about this on my program many, many times, that here we are right in the uh, pit, the middle of the Middle East, and supposedly where the last battle of Armageddon could be started and uh, endured. What are your thoughts about, are we opening up a big can of worms over there that could turn into the holy war of Armageddon? What are your thoughts? Well, I, you know, the eschatology, end of times discussion is uh, one that uh, I always stay away from because while all of our faiths uh, have some versions of that, it's always uh, impossible to prove. But I will, you know, listen, I'm, I'm the one who's, I've been talking about that this is a new Cold War. This is, we've been uh, trying to educate Americans over the last, since 9-11, that this is not going to go away until the Muslim world, which is 56 Muslim majority countries that are all still pre-modern, that need to go through reform and modernization and liberty movements, that's going to take generations. Uh, but with social media and else, it is possible, but there will be revolutions. I mean, the West's freedom was not bloodless. You had a 30 years war that killed hundreds of thousands, and, and that was in a time before in which they weren't as driven by social media. So I think there will be a lot of tumultuous tectonic shifts. Hopefully it will go in the right direction. We need to have the intestinal fortitude to do it. We've done it not only after world wars, but into a Cold War in the 20th century, and we've persevered. Uh, I think what, you know, by doing nothing, we've proven just in the past three years, America staying out of Syria has allowed Russia, Iran, China, and others to drive the most evil in the region, and our ally Israel will eventually be threatened um, by whatever ends up in that, unless America helps try to, not boots on the ground, but tries to help fuel the good guys there. We may make some errors, but remember, we've been putting in the hands of Wahhabis jets and, and weapons for generations. So, uh, you know, there is a better option. Finally, there's reform and revolution happening, and I think the majority do need help from America, and doing nothing has proven to be the worst choice. You know, Dr. Jasser, as a former lieutenant commander in the United States Navy, you have your thoughts about the military and its strength. This administration just absolutely has left me with a cold feeling of not liking the military, not supporting the military, and we've seen it with the cuts in their attitude. What are your thoughts about two more years with Obama at the helm and our cuts in our military to protect us not only here but overseas? Yeah, I don't know how they're expecting our sons and daughters to do all this work with the reduced uh, time, with the longer deployments that they're being asked. Uh, uh, pilots who are not are barely flying enough 
uh, hours in cockpit in order to maintain their certification that are just waiting to get out of the military now because they're just not flying enough hours. So, you know, this type of uh, attitude is destroying the strongest protector of freedom on the planet. Um, but, you know, this is why we have election cycles. This is why we're a democracy. Uh, he is our commander-in-chief. Uh, I think that we can, through, uh, you know, I mean, his calculus is not necessarily one of leadership, but rather one of politics and polls. So this year, because of polling and because of media and others, we have gotten our commander-in-chief to do what's right. Uh, he is uh, finally uh, using American force to uh, uh, decimate the militants in, in ISIS. So I do think that with the right pressure points, uh, we can demand that our leader, uh, our leaders do what's right, and that's going to have to be the only solution over the next two years. Uh, we have a caller with a quick question. Caller, go ahead. Very fast, please. Yes, uh, the other day, last Saturday, there was a game at the Air Force Academy at Colorado Springs, and they didn't allow a flyover because they were cutting back. And I said to myself, here you are at the Academy, Air Force Academy, and you won't allow a flyover. But to the amount of fuel that is wasted by this president flying around in leisure is, is, is appalling. And it's just, there's the logic to this is illogical, and I'll hang up. Thanks. Uh, Dr. Jasser, respond to that, would you please? Yeah, I, you know, it is sad. It saddens me, uh, the former naval officer, to see the uh, marginalization of our military um, as, uh, you know, you also see this is not a president who just sort of wants to decrease taxes and, and make government small. Uh, on the other hand, while our military is shrinking, he has uh, overseen the largest increase in uh, uh, um, medical funding from the government in order to uh, dictate uh, health care. So, you know, it's just a, a perception of a post-American world in which America does not play a role. And uh, I hope ultimately our sons and daughters realize that uh, these things will change and, and uh, ultimately there are election cycles for uh, uh, changing those that set policy and hopefully we can have a president that does have a doctrine a clear doctrine, not the, oh, just don't, you know, don't do stupid things, whatever that means, mm -hmm. uh, but actually has a clear vision of what the world can be with American influence. Let me ask you a question about your book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, uh, An American Muslim Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith. When people buy the book and read the book and they've closed the cover, what's the main theme or the main remembrance that you want them to hold with them after they finish reading your book? Yeah, I think the key is uh, at the end I have a letter to my children, and it's about legacy. Uh, that ultimately my parents taught me that I could practice my faith more freely here in America than anywhere in the world, and that Americanism, that liberty, that embodiment of liberty had what makes America even, I believe, far more successful than European nations is we combined liberty and, and put at the top that first freedom of religious liberty. That is the solution to radical Islam, to political Islam, to Islamic supremacism, that a devout Christian country could develop a constitution without even using the word Christian, but yet be very Christian. Muslims, too, can learn that we can develop a, a, a sense. And there's an, a, a former president of Indonesia who said that Muslims can have a state of Islam in their heart, but they do not, and they should reject the Islamic state. And, and I think that's a very important, the establishment clause, if you will, that's the legacy of Americanism. That's the legacy of why my family are American patriots. They were able to escape Syria. And I hope when people read my book, they realize that, you know, most Muslims are, are, are good people who love this country. And we need to engage them to be at the head of the spear of the reform necessary within the House of Islam to defeat this, ide uh, this ideology, not just violence. The violence and the ideology that you referred to just now, uh, there are a lot of people, Dr. Jasser, that are absolutely so afraid after what happened in Moore, Oklahoma this past week, and we certainly hope that doesn't happen again. But what are your concerns about, like we mentioned earlier, the lone wolf attitude in this country as far as trying to take things into their own hand and commit this violence? 
You mean the lone wolf about Muslims or the lone wolf from, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the concerns of, of blowback? No, the ideology as far as the radical Islam and the beheadings yeah. and the danger factor right here in central uh, portion of our United States and more Oklahoma area that you wouldn't even comprehend that that could possibly happen. What are your thoughts about what can we do? How do we stop this movement? Yeah, I mean, you have to approach it the way, you know, these aren't random. Uh, this guy is not workplace violence. He's not a lone wolf any more than a flu virus that, that gets into a, a single patient. is a lone virus in the global pandemic. They're related. Uh, they uh, attack uh, and uh, set off fuses in different places with different individuals. And the way to counter that is not to be anesthetized by saying that, well, he's self-radicalized on the Internet. You need to look at his mosque that he went to. There are many connections in some of the, the Oklahoma City mosque with Imam like Suhaib Webb, who was also the Imam at the Boston Mosque for the Boston Bombers. And it's not like they're preaching violence, but the narrative of anti-Americanism, of pro jihad of the Islamic State is the foundation. And until we start reporting on these things at the same time, together, and create a narrative that compels Muslims to, to fill that anti-Americanism instead with pro-Americanism, to say that, you know what, the way to counter these guys is for Muslims to give sermons about about why this country is the best place for Muslims to live. None of that positive narrative is filling the websites of mosques and elsewhere, so therefore, these guys are apt to be radicalized, and that is the primary sickness that is not being treated. Amen. Very well stated. I am going to go get the book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, An American Muslim's Patriot's Fight to Save His Faith, by Dr. Zudi Jasser. And Dr. Jasser, after I finish reading it, I'm going to call you back and have you back Back on the program again. Thank you so much for your time and your thoughts this morning, and uh, I'll look forward to another uh, meeting on the radio and have you back. Thank you. I'd love to do that. Thank you. That was great to be with you. Thank you, sir. God bless. Thank you. Uh, very nice man right there, Dr. Zudi Jasser, and uh, former lieutenant commander in the United States Navy and the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim's Patriots Fight to Save His Faith. And uh, I guarantee you, I've watched and listened to this man for a long, long time on television and radio, and I have a lot of respect for him. And uh, what I would term a very straight shooter. Uh, we're going to have the weather forecast real quick, and then we'll visit with Gina a little bit, and the dogs barking and everything else. My goodness, we've got some activity here this morning. And the weather is brought to you this hour by Lennox Home Comfort Systems. Whether it's gas furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, you and your family will enjoy the comfort. All you have to do is call Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459. And remember, they sell warm winters and cool summers. Here now, Michael Rogers Weather. Hi everyone, Michael Rogers for Zib at the Runch. Got a shower the table off today, so that means we're going to have a nice day tomorrow. I have a nice day today, depending upon the shower itself, but uh, the yucky weather is going to taper off, and you're going to start to see a lot of sun, very little clouds all the way through the weekend, and to make it even nicer, you got cooler temperatures, 61 for the high today. So there you have it. Enjoy the weather, so the weather you got. All right. Thank you, MichaelRogersWeather.com, brought to you by our friends at Lennox Home Comfort Systems at Ren Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 678-0459. Calls are welcome and appreciated, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. I got to say thank you to two wonderful ladies. First of all, my lovely bride, Deanne, just barely walked in the door uh, from going to a doctor's appointment and found out that we were having trouble with uh, getting Trevor Loudon on the phone and helped with that. And then the other lady, of course, Gina Jameson over at the station. I don't think I've ever had uh, somebody that really cares as much as you do, Gina, about getting things on, getting them right, everything. I really do appreciate you, and thanks for all your effort. Oh, anytime. It's kind of my job. It's what they pay me the <clears throat> big bucks. <laughs> 
<laughs> Woo, that was a little tongue in cheek, if you will. <laughs> I just love my job, though. And, you know, I like to make things right and I like to make things sound good because that's what I'm here for. You know, uh, having both of those individuals on, Trevor Loudon, and we'll call him back and get a longer dissertation yes. with him. He is an interesting man. I want to hear more from him. And I love his accent. I, uh, yes, I know. It took me a second to kind of understand what he was saying, but once I got used to the accent, then I could then I could hear it. But it's just kind of getting through that first day first. And, and then Dr. Jasser, you know, I, I'm sure you've probably seen him on television. He's been on Hannity many, 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 many times, and O'Reilly and all the talk shows and everything. I, I've got a lot of respect for him, Gina. Even, and I want to say this carefully because I know I'm going to get criticized. My faith as a Christian versus his is as a Muslim very diametrically opposed but I respect him for what he's trying to do to yes. have an open statement and yes. open conversation about how the two can sit down and live together without violence we can coexist we really really can it's just what he is talking against is the extremists yep. those that are outside yep. of the of the main realm of Islam and so I really do respect what he has to say and I, I think that he's you know right on point we can coexist we can get along we can y you know do things together but it's the extremists out there that are kind of spoiling the pot for everybody else you know this attitude of uh, and I can't think of the person's name right now one of the imam imams that was on television the other evening mm -hmm. uh, in the demanding that, yes, the Islamic flag will fly over the White House. Yes, you will all adhere to Sharia law. Yes, we will have violence. Yes, you will either agree or you will be in a non-existent attitude. We'll take care of you. We'll get rid of you. Th that is absolutely petrifyingly scary. Yeah. And that's what the radical Islam is trying to push. And when you hear that kind of thing happen in the heartland of America in little bitty more Oklahoma, 20 miles south of Oklahoma City. I don't know about you, but that is scary. Oh, it, it freaks the heck out of me, and I can tell you that straight up. I don't think that main, and this is this is my true heart's belief, and not that I know all of that much about that religion. I'm going to be right up front. I don't know much about Islam. I don't. However, I think that in the heart of any religion, Islam included, uh, there is a good soul. There is a good heart. There's meant to do good. It's, it's family-based. It's all about bringing about morals and family values. I think that what we are seeing, though, is just a small faction that is, you know, making themselves known worldwide for their extreme beliefs. You cannot, anybody, tell me that a religion is going to preach death, uh, maiming, killing, bombing, and terrorist activities as part of a way to get to an eternal hereafter. No. There's no way in the world I'm ever going to buy that. Uh, and, and there's no way in the world that I'm going to buy that either because true faith, true religion, if you're going to follow God, whatever God it is that you choose to you know, follow, it's all about love. It's all about forgiveness and it's all about acceptance. It's not about killing, maiming, and doing away with the other because, oh, well, your way is so much righter than somebody else's. No, it's about acceptance, love, and you know, true family values. I don't believe that any true religion would would uh, push what the extremists are pushing. But you know, the thing that bothers me, and, and I told uh, Zudi before I had him on the air this morning that I would uh, get him off in about 15 minutes because he had another radio interview to do down in the Phoenix area. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions I'm going to have him back for and talk to him about, this administration absolutely puts its tail between its legs and runs away from calling things as they are. You will not hear Obama or any member of his staff say radical Islam, no. Muslim terrorism, whatever. And and Zudi came right out and said it, and you heard it in his interview this morning. We've got to start telling it like it is. Yes, quit, quit uh, sugarcoating, quit fluffing out, quit, you know, just glossing over. Uh, the American public is not dumb. We're not stupid. We see what's going on. Just tell it, tell it to us like it is. We can handle it. Uh, this president it leaves so much to be desired. Oh, I know. Okay. I've got to pay some bills. I'll be right back. Don't forget Harvest of Savings going on at Lee's Furniture Floors and more. All the mattresses. I mean, my goodness, they've got just 
bundles and bundles and bundles of good night's sleep right there with all their mattresses and window coverings, uh, 30 to 40 percent off. And they've got the power recliners and they have carpet. Oh my, rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls of carpet right there, at least furniture, floors and more at 459 Overland in Burley. And besides that, they're very nice, knowledgeable people that can help you with the beautification and comfort of your home. Remember, lease furniture, floors, and more at 459 Overland in Burley. Um, coming up next hour, we have Dr. History, and I always look forward to that on Tuesdays. And then at 1030, my dear, dear friend Jack Euler is going to be on the program. We're going to be talking about wolves and how, look out, some of the courts, some of the judges, and some of the environmental groups are playing crybaby and want to change the rules again. We're going to have all that with Jack Euler coming up at 1030. Uh, let's see, what else have I got? Uh, that's it. I'm going to turn it over to ABC News and Gina and the whole crew. I'm going to take a little break for about six minutes. We'll be right back. Oh, my. Here we go. Hour number three. Oh, boy. I'll tell you what. Uh, got a lot of things cooking right here. Zebeth Ranch, and I'm Zeb Bell. Good morning, along with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations. And, of course, our dear friends at Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley. And our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Call them at 734-6969. I was just looking over the menu. For the Chadwick 139 West Main and Burley, the Chadwick Sports Grill. Oh, oh my. Today, chicken tatrazzini with vegetables, choice of potato and super salad. Oh, it sounds so good. Yesterday, they had that Monte Cristo sandwich. Oh, boy. I'll tell you the food, the people, the location, the environment. I love the Chadwick 139 West Main and Burley. Today, chicken tatrazzini. See you there. Oh, and by the way, too, don't forget Atlantic's Home Comfort Systems. Whether it's a gas furnace, air conditioner, or a heat pump, you and your family will always enjoy the comfort. And check out the Lennox Home Comfort Systems with our friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459, where they always provide warm winters and cool summers. Oh, my. Look at this poor, distraught aging, humped over little man as he carries that heavy book, that book for all the ages, that book of history. Here he is, Dr. History. Good morning, Zeb. How you doing today? I'm running out of things to introduce you with. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're, you know, it's been about seven years now. I mean, uh, you can only uh, pull out so many tricks, I guess. <laughs> By the way, I met one of your children the other day. Okay. A lovely lady. I think it was Alyssa. Yes, that was her. And it just absolutely astounds me how she could be your daughter. Okay. I know I left that open-ended. No, she's a very, very, <laughs> a very, very nice daughter. lady. Right? I, I just absolutely thought she was the nicest gal, and she, she didn't know it was me. And she said, you're Zeb Bell? I, you're Zeb Bell? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> she's a very nice young lady. Well, I, I'm prejudiced, but I think so, too. And uh, I'll tell you what, you have an extremely nice family, and I poke fun at you a lot, and sometimes you do the same to me, but, man, you are blessed. Oh, I know that for sure. In fact, this coming weekend, we're going to have everybody here, all the kids, all the grandkids. Uh, so it's going to be a great weekend. How, how many people does that mean? Well, let's see. Five kids and their spouses, so that's ten. And the number 11, a daughter that's not married, so that's 11. And then 11 grandkids, so that's 22. So, but we'll go out and get some pumpkins and we'll uh, get out the skeet thrower. And that's not the problem. Skeet. That's not the problem. The main issue that needs to be decided and concerned about is how many bathrooms have you got? <laughs> We may have to uh, pull in an outhouse. <laughs> uh, it'll be good. All right. What are you going to talk about today? 
Well, I'll tell you what. You know, one thing that's always, uh, of course, in my profession, that's always uh, fascinated me is the study of medicine mm -hmm. and the history of medicine. And so today I'm going to talk about homestead doctors. Okay. So the doctors of the Old West, which played a huge part in, uh, you know, the cavalry, the mining, the uh, military, uh, everything. But I'm going to talk about uh let's turn my phone off you know that's what have you got the good the bad and the ugly on your phone <laughs> you heard that did you i did <laughs> i can see clint eastwood coming through saying i'm gonna get you a pillow yep, that's my that's my ring on my phone yeah, i'll be darn okay I forgot to turn that off anyway after our story we're going to talk about the homestead doctor so our house calls on the great plains uh, okay so, you know, back in 1862, they passed what they call the Homestead Act in May 20th of 1862. And this made it possible for ordinary people to get land of their own. And many settlers had already put down roots in the West uh, after the great uh, gold rush. Well, they still needed food, and there were small farmers that were soon growing crops. And with this kind of trickle westward of uh, people, it soon became a flood of people heading west. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, towns sprang up along the immigrant trails and then, of course, spread out from there. Well, as settlements grew, doctors soon followed. And many came west for the same reason that others did, and that was to invest in land or dig for gold. Okay. Now, some of them accompanied the great migration of immigrants to the mountains and to the Great Plains during and after the Civil War, so 1860s right in there. Now, others uh, sought, their <clears throat> sought their fortunes at the gold camps, or they joined the Army as contract surgeons uh, during the Indian uprisings. And as a group, the frontier physicians were going basically where they were most needed and, of course, where they could make the most money. Mm -hmm. Now, it wasn't unusual for a doctor to work in several different places before actually settling down in one spot. Now, the practice of medicine held not a lot of prestige in the 1800s. Uh, the profession was not very lucrative. But by the late uh, century, medicine had begun... Uh, to kind of seem more promising. And so a lot of people decided they wanted to be doctors. Now the medical schools back east, they were turning out actually too many graduates and the profession actually became a little bit overcrowded back in that time. Now wait a minute, wait a minute, stop right there. You say they were turning out too many graduates, but were they graduating with any kind of quality? You know, that's the big question. and. Uh, some of the things I have read is that uh, during the mid-1800s back in there, there was a point where sometimes you were better off to uh, doctor yourself rather than call in a doctor. And I'm, mm. not, I'm not putting them down. They, uh, they did what they thought was right. But sometimes it was wrong. I see. And you can okay. ask George Washington about that. All right, I will. I'll call him after the program. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and ask him about being bled four times oh. before, before he died. Oh, my. So anyway, but again, not putting them down. They, they did the best they could. Yeah. Now, because of this great influx of doctors, a lot of young graduates of medical school often had to support themselves by doing other things. They had to go into farming or some other business. So a lot of them looked west and thought, okay, that looks like a pretty good place to head out. Now, also, some of them headed west because the overpopulation in the east it lended itself towards disease, and coming out west was basically healthier for, mm -hmm. them, for the doctor of themselves. Mm -hmm. So with only primitive transportation, of course, and rough roads, uh, a lot of the families out west were isolated. You know, nobody around for miles. And so these were the people that the homestead doctor served. Now, in the early days, some doctors rode a regular circuit to visit these isolated settlers. And later, as mining, ranching, and railroad uh, communities formed, a lot of these doctors established a permanent practice. So the small town doctor faced a, kind of a unique challenge. Not only was he responsible for the lives of his neighbors, his friends, and family, but because he lived in the community where he practiced, he saw his successes and his failures every day when he walked down the street. Oh, boy. So, say, for example, the bad result of, say, somebody that had a broken leg, and maybe he didn't get it quite set like it should, uh, and every day as he walked the streets, he would see this fellow limping down the street. 
Now, some doctors, however, were blessed with plain luck or earned respect only uh, early in their practice that kept them from uh, too much criticism. Mm -hmm. Now, a young doctor's reputation could be made or broken with a single case. All it had to do is, you know, the death of somebody or uh, just a wrong diagnosis. But a few good, successful results usually assured a community that the new doc could be trusted. Then. Yeah, I mean, there's he, he didn't know what he was doing. nothing worse than seeing a guy with a broken leg with one leg headed north and the other one headed south. That's right. And, uh, you know, you and I are old enough, Zeb, to know that even in a small town like Burley or Murtaugh or back where you grew up, there was a few doctors and uh, their reputations depended on uh, their successes. Absolutely, yeah. So... Now, even for doctors who had offices in town, uh, the majority of medical visits were house calls, and mostly by horse and buggy, and of course later by automobile, mm -hmm. the country doctors rode out to see their patients, and some of whom might live 50 plus miles away, and whatever time and whatever weather, when the call came, they went. Yep. Now, the house call is a medical service that uh, I'm going to guess many of our listeners out there probably do not remember. There might be a few. I do. Do you? Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, the, you know, it happened even in our lifetime. But on the frontier, doctors usually went to see their patients rather than the other way around. Yep. Doc so Adams did it all the time. Even, even in the East, almost all health care took place in the home. Yep. yep. Now, because doctor services were expensive, you know, a lot of families tried to take care of their own medical needs and called in the doctor only when it was unavoidable. So... For most ailments, the care of the mother or a neighbor seemed pretty good, but if a family member was suffering or appeared to be near death, then the call went out, go get the doctor. Right. And usually somebody left on horseback and because uh, they usually didn't have telephones. But a house call could last for hours or even days. Mm. Now, some of these good doctors spent a lot of time uh, at the bedside when their patient was desperately ill. They were expected to stay in the sick room for long periods. And since no specific treatments were known for most ailments, basically a comforting presence was about all the physician could offer. Look at old and Doc Adams from Gunsmoke. Now, there was a guy that stayed there till they either lived or died. Right. Now, sometimes the doctor had to sleep in a strange, uncomfortable bed in a small, crowded shack, uh, occasionally accompanied by bed bugs or lice. Oh, boy. Uh, made things a little more memorable. And a country doctor seldom knew what to expect when he or she left on a call, so they had to come prepared for everything and anything. So here comes the doctor's saddlebag or leather handbag, which was basically a mobile clinic. Mm -hmm. Now, the doctor's saddlebags were often fitted with compartments for bottles and instruments, uh, everything ready to carry to the bedside, and it's remarkable how much the doctor's bag contained. Absolutely. And he had a whole bunch of vials of powdered and liquid drugs, antiseptics, syringes, needles, sutures, tourniquets, plasters, a stomach pump, and who knows what else that they carried. Yeah. So, I mean, they had to work on everything from a sore throat to a broken leg, so the bag contained everything that the guy needed, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, a typical house call went something like this. The doctor sat by the patient's bed, never standing over him, and visited with the family, all of whom usually crowded around the sick person in the room. And they'd talk about the weather or the crops or whatever things to kind of make the family feel at ease. And then uh, he removed a large gold watch from his vest pocket. He would grab the patient's wrist and uh, count the, the radio pulse. Now, a wise doctor consulted with the elders in the family about the patient's condition and their experience with the illness and knowledge of, of the case, which was always helpful if they had a little history, especially if it was a young child. Absolutely. really couldn't talk. But then the doctor would lay his hands on the sick person's forehead and their, on their cheeks and on their neck and, and with great concentration, uh, both to help with the diagnosis and, if you think about it, to reassure the patient and the onlookers. I mean, when you think about the laying on of hands, when you're, if you have something that hurts, you want the doctor to touch that spot, right? The knee or the elbow or the shoulder. Well, thermometers were kind of rare outside of the medical centers of the East. So if frontier doctors carried them, they usually got broken in saddlebags and one thing or another. So uh, they became really good at determining the presence of a fever just by touch. I mean, that's all they had. Mm. So a good doctor recognized the value of touch and, like I said, the laying on of hands. And once, uh, you know, that was an important tool for the family doctor. 
And of course, trust and faith uh, in this doctor. That uh, you know, if you're if you've got a doctor looking over you and you trust that guy, that that goes a long ways towards getting you better. Uh, it's pretty hard to trust somebody that when you got a broken leg, they come in and touch your ear. That's right. <laughs> Uh, or want to remove the wrong kidney. So, uh, but, you know, after the doctor felt the patient's face and forehead for a fever, his hands moved to the patient's stomach and to feel for any masses or tender areas and enlargement of organs such as the liver or the spleen. Uh, the doctor then listened to the heart and lungs with his stethoscope, and he'd, of course, open the mouth and look at their tongue and their lips. And, and some of the most up-to-date physicians might also have the instrument to check for blood pressure. Oh, my. Which a lot of them didn't back then. Yeah. They would have an otoscope to look in the ears. They'd have an ophthalmoscope to look in their eyes, most of them. Now, once the physician arrived at a diagnosis, he would prepare a prescription. Now, back then, there were few tablets available. Mm -hmm. So most medicines were actually powders, which were in little tiny bottles. And so the doctor would put those together uh, as he saw fit. So usually he would use the tip of his pocket knife, and he would select from several different vials or bottles, and he'd take out the proportions that he thought he needed. He would blend the powders, and then he would fold each dose into a square, uh, into a piece of newspaper, and then fold it up. Oh, my. So the medicine could be easily transferred to a teaspoon or a glass of water. Sure. So, again, the exact amounts were based on the doctor's uh, experience. So now in cases of pneumonia where the patient was very sick and no experienced nurse was available, the doctor would remain by the bedside uh, just working with the patient and changing the positions of the patient until the crisis occurred, a, a sharp drop in fever and sudden improvement. And this could take days. Uh, yeah. And this was before antibiotics, remember. Yeah, right. Couldn't just come in and shoot them up. But before the doctor left, he would instruct the members of his household on the patient's care, and uh, then he would leave, and more than likely, he, sometimes he'd have to come back. But, you know, a lot of the doctors spent a lot of their time on the road, on horseback, by horse and buggy, now occasionally actually by train. Mm -hmm. Now, the doctor might spend days traveling on one trip going to see a patient. Holy and cow. think back, you know, you've been in the northern states here, Montana, Idaho, Think of the weather. I mean, the snowstorms, the rainstorms, the rough roads. Yeah. Uh, and it could even, you know, even dangerous people along the road. And sometimes it uh, took so long to get uh, there that the doctor, of course, arrived too late. And the patient was gone. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, but the doctor on horseback or in a buggy was a familiar scene, clip-clopping around on the narrow roads, uh, from moving from house to house at all hours in all weather. And there was comfort and reassurance in knowing that the doctor was on the job. And the doctor's posture, I hadn't thought about this before, but it kind of told what was going on. Really? If the doctor was just kind of on his wagon and he's kind of sitting kind of relaxed and easy going, you know that things were okay, pretty routine. But if the doctor was sitting upright on the wagon and putting the whip to the horse, you knew that there was an emergency somewhere. Oh, yeah. So he was headed out in a hurry. But again, horse travel on these isolated roads uh, was unpredictable, it was risky, and all these frontier doctors made house calls uh, at their own peril. And in fact, I'm gonna tell you a couple of stories. There was a Dr. Robinson uh, who actually lost his life in June of 1865 while attempting to cross a river at flood stage. Uh, it seems bad weather brought risks, you know, of all kinds of accidents, but one of the biggest dangers of horse and buggy travel was the possibility of a runaway. Mm -hmm. And again, you've been around horses, and I have, and, you know, horses aren't always just an easygoing, lackadaisical type horse. You think? <laughs> Sometimes a, a bee sting or a, something to spook them, and they're off and running. Rattlesnake, so, a piece of paper, it, my yeah. goodness. In fact, there's a doctor lying up in Montana. He experienced five separate runaway accidents in his early practice. Holy and smokes. in one of these, he got dumped and dislocated his own shoulder. Oh, my. So then there was another doctor. His name was Dr. Bill. He was a well-known frontier doctor. He was killed when his team ran away. It seems his team had taken an unusual road. They went over an embankment nearly 20 feet high. The doctor landed uh, on the back of the wagon, which was found upside down, and, and he was dead. Oh, my goodness so, sakes. Now, another uh, tough thing was fording rivers when it was a real hazard. 
In fact, there, I'm going to tell you another story. There's a Dr. Reynolds. Him and his wife were do- both doctors, and they practiced up, to, up in Montana. Well, one afternoon, the Dr. Reynolds uh, got a call to go to a place called Gardner, which was on the other side of the Yellowstone River. Mm-hmm. And the message was, come quick, my baby is burned bad. Oh, my. So, anyway, the ford across the river would eliminate a lot of miles, and uh, it was an extremely dangerous decision. But the doctors chose to take the chance. So the doctors' rentals, uh, here's, here's what they said in their own words. Before we went, we're halfway across. The water was rushing under the seat, but there was no going back. We crawled up on the back of the seat, and I clutched the medicine bags under my arm. The horse got beyond his depth and started to swim, and the buggy, buggy swung downstream with the current. Oh, boy. Then the horse began to go out of sight. Uh-oh. The doctor laid the whip on her. She plunged violently forward and struck bottom, and in just a few minutes had scrambled out on the other bank. <laughs> now, if that doesn't get your heart going, I don't know what would. I'll tell you what, no, I was a little worried there for a moment. <laughs> Well, now another one, uh, another uh, doctor, uh, the this, this same Dr. Uh, Reynolds, his wife, was passing through up there in Montana up by Yellowstone Park. And uh, just as she was coming around the corner, a great big old grizzly bear stood up on his hind legs. Well, the horses weren't too fond of uh, grizzly bears, and they took off a running. And they ran for about a mile over rocks and all kinds of rough ground, but the doctor was able to pull them in. And they didn't tip the buckboard over. Didn't tip, didn't tip it over. But uh, and she was, you know, again a pretty, pretty close call. Woo! But you know, naturally, when a uh, doctor received a call, he or she had to weigh the circumstances and the dangers. The decision depended on the distance, the weather, the roads, and sometimes he chose to go regardless of the risk and only luck. You know, prevented tragedy. Wow. Uh, in fact, there was a Dr. Chapel. Uh, he got the call, and there was a storm, a uh, snowstorm. Well, the journey there and back was about 36 hours, and he managed to deliver a healthy eight pound baby boy. Wow. But this Dr. Chapel made a lot of, uh, many more trips during his practice, but uh, one extremely difficult journey led to his premature death. It seems like. Uh, he was traveling in the spring. It was cold. It was rainy. Uh, the roads, it took 30 hours uh, of a long trip to get there and back. And because of uh, it was so hard on him that it weakened him, and basically he died from uh, exposure. Oh, my. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm exposed to a clock that's running out. I've got to say goodbye. <laughs> I, I noticed that. I'm watching my clock, and it's a good thing because I'm at the end of the story. Well, you know what? This was really interesting about Frontier Doctors. Oh, let me take, just tell you one quick one. It's only oh. going to take 10 seconds. Okay. One doctor, he was out making a house call, and he stayed a little too long. It was 12 miles from town. His horse got tired and headed for home without him. The doctor got ready to go. His horse was gone. He ran for four miles before he finally caught up with his horse. <laughs> Holy smokes. And and the patients paid for that, too. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure they did. <laughs> hey, listen, doctor-history.com. How are things going? Well, we've had 32,000 hits on our web page oh, wow. uh, in 25 different countries. You know the odd thing, Zeb? We have not one listener in Wyoming. Now, really? All across the world, all across the United States, and, you know, Utah, California, Montana, Washington, nobody in Wyoming, our neighbor state. Hello, uh, Wyoming. Wyoming. Wake up, um, Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we still continue to have our listeners from China. Oh, my. We haven't from had relations United severed United yet. That's, that's good. University. Okay. Well, now, listen, we got to keep plugging that, doctor-history.com. You can hear all the previous uh, stories that we've talked about. Just go to doctor-history.com. And, uh, Ken, you always do such a wonderful job, and I say good luck on your family gathering. Oh, we'll have a great time. We always do. All right. Tell them all I said hello. 
All right. You have a good day, Jeff. God bless you, man. Thanks. You bet. Bye. Hey, real quick, i got to tell you that on Thursdays we have a special segment, and it is Cache County School Days. And we're brought to you by A Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley. Don't forget, they've got all the cozy blankets from just $10 to keep the little ones warm. And they've got hundreds of new outfits for the young folks and uh, all the baby material, everything, layaways, toys, books, puzzles, you name it, right there at A Child's World. 1308 Overland in Burley. And also we say thank you to the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Life-saving colonoscopies performed by an outstanding surgeon at Ambulatory Surgery Center in Burley. And don't forget, too, uh, ear tubes, tonsils removed, dental procedures, needing anesthesia, all taken care of right there at Ambulatory Surgery Center, 677-8888. Along with the Child's World, bringing you school days in Cassia County. We'll be right back. Don't go away. And now back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. Thank you very much and welcome back. And we got to hurry to get in. My next guest, Jack Euler, is with us. We're going to have Jack on the air in just a moment. Don't forget Roggy Auction Community Sale coming up this Saturday, October 4th at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds at 11 o'clock. They're going to bring down the gavel and it's going to be a great great sale they had a fantastic sale in the spring they're going to have another one right now this coming weekend don't miss it at the uh minidoka county fairgrounds starting at 11 o'clock for more information go to the website roggyauctions.com or call kate at 431-0074 or ron at 316-0318 roggy auction company community sale this saturday october 4th at the minidoka county fairgrounds at 11 a.m. Tell you more about that tomorrow. Jack Euler, dear friend, in the studio. We're running a little bit behind, but uh, Jack, over the last couple of weeks, you and I have been really watching some of the stories in the newspaper about a judge reinstating protections for Wyoming wolves and uh, the Forest Service saying initially that the media needed a permit to take some pictures and uh, all kinds of changes going on. What's this with this judge over in Wyoming for First and foremost. Well, um, hold that real close. Zeb, it's, it's protections, or like the paper said, uh, the, or the environmental group that, and the judge agreed with them that uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was wrong to trust Wyoming to maintain at least 100 wolves or 10 breeding pair. Now, you know. That's fine. You go down and you find out, you read in the article a little bit more, you find out there's over 300 wolves in Wyoming. There's uh, 23 breeding pair. What's wrong with the picture? I mean, Wyoming is doing what they're supposed to do under the wolves being brought back to um, the area. But... Uh, it is controlled, but they say the judge said the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was wrong to trust Wyoming. Now, what does that tell you? Do you know who is the head of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service? Dan Ash. I know the man. I've dealt with this man. He wouldn't meet with us in Washington, D.C. He had to come. He, he said he didn't want to be seen with us in Washington, D.C., he had to come to Salt Lake, and we met with him on the wolf issue in getting delisting done for the lower 48 states. Dan Ash used to be um, the head of Defenders of Wildlife for the United States. Now, he's when Obama went in, Obama took him to be over the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Well, Dan Ash hasn't changed his colors on what he believes and everything, but here is a federal judge that the environmentalists went to to get him to say the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service doesn't care. All right, let's let's back up a little bit. What was the initial agreement with the state of Wyoming? How many breeding pairs had they agreed to? Well, um, 
they are supposed to have 10 breeding pair, okay. 100 wolves okay. outside of Yellowstone Park. Okay, outside of Yellowstone Park. Now, uh, who's who said that they didn't? Well, the, nobody has said that they didn't, but it just said in this article that the judge agreed with the environmentalists that there was not enough protections for the wolves. I, I, it, the it's only because of wording right. in how in how Wyoming takes care of the situation over there. That's why because I asked that they question. They can kill on site. Yeah, that's why I asked that question. It's no different than what happened here in the state of Idaho. Uh, we had the agreement with the environmentalists and, of course, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for a bare minimum of a certain amount of breeding pairs and number of wolves, which has far been exceeded. But what these crybaby environmentalists have done has gone to this judge, evidently, and said, well, that's not enough. We're going to bend the rules, break the rules, and try to shape the rules for the betterment of our beliefs, and we're going and say, put them back on the endangered species list and uh, get more numbers. They just keep changing everything. Well, they do. I mean, enough is never enough. That's right. Um, I was watching a show last night on um, the polar bears, and it was talking about how there's protections and how how the ice is going away and all this stuff and and the polar bears are becoming endangered and you know it's frustrating what what is happening zeb is we're being led and we're being taken care of by the environmentalists want the united states government to do everything for us as individuals. Well, okay, now let's, uh, we haven't got a lot of time, unfortunately, and I want to talk to you quickly. Look uh, at the Wisconsin thing. That's what I was going to ask you about is the state of Wisconsin. That's another mess right now. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, um, the, the government trusts no one but themselves. Uh, in the Wisconsin, the laws allow wolves to be hunted by dogs. Uh, with dogs. Yep, that's right. But now there is a so-called federal wildlife specialist. I don't know what that takes to be a federal wildlife specialist, but that must watch a hunter. If a hunter gets a wolf in Wisconsin, he has had, he's got to have that federal wildlife specialist standing there by him when he, when he uh, skins, the wolf. skins the wolf. Yeah. And yeah. the reason for to that. To see if there is any bite marks on the wolf. Yeah, they're going after the fact that they, uh, the environmentalists, don't want any dogs uh, chasing the wolves, etc. And if there's any bite marks, they want to impose a fine. They want to take away the guy's license and everything. It's absolutely asinine and ridiculous. Hold on, we got a caller. Good morning, caller. Go ahead. Good morning, you two. Personally, I think that that uh, woman judge should be disqualified because I'll bet you a $5 bill and a hamburger that she's one of an environmental protectionist and she shouldn't be allowed to listen to these uh, cases. That's, uh, that's why that thing was heard uh, before her in Washington, D.C., instead of in Wyoming. It should have been heard in the Tenth Circuit Court in Wyoming, and I've talked to Karen Bud Fallon out of Cheyenne, who has had a lot of experience with the wolf issue in Wyoming, and we discussed exactly that. Yeah. Anyway, happy second birthday and happy anniversary to you, Jack. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he puts his anniversary down as his birthday. How are we supposed to know? Anyway, Jack, uh, I want to go back and talk a little bit more about this. Everywhere you look, whether it's Wisconsin, whether it's Wyoming, whether it's here in the state of Idaho, whether it's now over in Oregon and Washington, and they've got some problems coming up also, uh, it looks like the environmentalists absolutely are mounting new campaigns to change, bend, and alter the rules and the... Uh, agreements that were made is there any way that you see Idaho having uh, basically their rules overridden and the hunt stopped and various other things stopped with the amount of wolves that we have right now 
they would have a since the judge in Montana retired, they would have a tough time finding one to do the same thing for Idaho and Montana. But uh, yes, it could happen. I mean, if the judge, because Wyoming has three times as many as they agreed to in the beginning. Right, right. And, um, you know, but there's a little secret that there's not a lot of people know. There's a piece of Yellowstone Park that comes into Idaho and it goes into Montana and it goes into Wyoming. But we could be uh we could have problems as a result of that piece of the park because i did some research on that several years ago let me ask you this and i'm jumping around here quite a bit and i apologize but there was also a story in the paper this morning uh that was about the idaho wolf and coyote hunting derby that wants a larger area i would imagine that the enviros and the tree huggers are going to try to get this shut down too oh yeah they're Totally. Well, it, there, there it goes to a permitting process. Uh, we've never had to have a permit to have a coyote derby. Uh, what, what's a big deal about the coyote derby? Yeah. And we, we stopped having coyote derbies, Sportsman for Fish and Wildlife, because of uh, the environmentalists going after our sponsors and going after people and and trying to shut them down, yeah. which we just backed away from them. Yeah, I've got to do a weather forecast, and then I will, I will take some more calls. Jack, but overall, when you look at the judge in Wyoming, and then you look at Montana and Idaho, principally the three states that have had the most exposure and the most press about the wolf reintroduction, uh, what do you think is going to happen in Montana, and what do you think might happen here going into the, su- the, the fall and the winter and then next spring? And I'll ask you that in just a moment. Quick. We're going to have our weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats and, of course, your hometown meat cutter, locally owned custom meat processor for over 20 years with the very best. They guarantee everything they sell. Scarrow's Meats, selling taste one bite at a time. Here right now, Michael Rogers weather. Hello, everyone. Michael Rogers for Zip at the Ranch. Got a shower as a taper off today, so that means going to have a nice day tomorrow. I have a nice day today, depending upon the shower itself, but uh, the yucky weather is going to taper off, and you're going to start to see a lot of sun, very little clouds all the way through the weekend, and to make it even nicer, you got cooler temperatures, 61 for the high today. So there you have it. Enjoy the weather. So with you guys. Thank you, Michael. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. Number to call, 324-7657. Wonderful folks. Don and the rest to the crew at 331 North Road, Jerome, Scarrow's Meat, selling taste, one bite at a time. Again, I'll ask that question. Uh, looking into a crystal ball, going into the fall and winter months, and then, of course, into 2015, uh, what do you think is going to be the modus operandi of these environmentalists in, in the three-state area, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho? Well, I'm going to probably stray away from your direct question and say this is not about the wolf. This is not a wolf issue. It's a spotted owl issue. It's a timber issue. It's whatever it is to take away our private property rights in in this country. And Sunday's editorial in the Times News talked about the boulder white clouds yes. needs our protection uh, yeah. of over 600,000 acres protected from what that's or exactly, from who that's right what uh, what's going on basically it's a locking out of people like me and you yes and the wolf is a tool the sage grouse is a tool I got an email that says they're trying to shut down 165 million acres in 11 western states, and they asked me to sign on in in this email thing 
to protest this in Washington, D.C. Let me ask you, Jack, and you and I have talked about this, about control and about taking away our, our public lands and our private lands and everything else. But when you look at this thing over the next 10 years, uh, boy, I mean, it's going to be tougher and tougher for ATVers to go up and use public lands. It's going to be a lot tougher for hunters to be able to go in certain places, fishing, uh, to go in certain places, whether or not they'll be grazing, I don't know. I mean, little by little, our lands are being taken away from us, even with possibly a camera. That's right. I mean, if you can't read and put one plus one together, <laughs> you can see what's coming. I mean, when they say the bolder white clouds have got to be protected, protected from what? I mean, how about all that stuff they've done in the past you know the frank church wilderness area today the fish and game commission is against the boulder white clouds issue why because they know what's coming as far as managing wildlife because in the frank church the fish and game cannot manage wildlife the way they're supposed to because they can't land helicopters there they can't shoot darts at an animal out of hel helicopters because it's a mechanical device and you cannot have a mechanical device hit the ground in the Frank Church wilderness area and the dart coming out of a, a gun is a, a mechanical device. I mean, we're being overrun by rules and regulations to keep us in our living rooms and away from any land. That's right. Yeah. And ranchers, I don't care who you are, you're going to be affected by this. And what is going to happen is the economies are really going to be bad. Absolutely. And the environmentalists try to say, oh, we will have more people coming to see our beautiful areas if if we do the Boulder White Clouds. Mm -hmm. Baloney. Yeah. What about, and I'm jumping here again, but real quick, the sage grouse issue. All of these are tied into one simple seven-letter word, and that's control. Whether it's the wolf issue, whether it's the sage grouse, whatever the case might be, and it's all to eliminate humankind from using the land. That's that's all it is. It's control of what we do and what we have done. And it goes to control. Now they're trying to control the fishing game on what they can do on these lands when, when the designations are being made. And when you get a judge that tells the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service that they were wrong to trust Wyoming to maintain, yeah. you know, yeah. when Dan Ash, who I know, who's head of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> What do you think, Jack, is going to happen here? I mean, uh, uh, if this judge all of a sudden is going to reinstate protection for Wyoming wolves, what's to stop a similar judge, even though you said earlier it's going to be find hard, hard to find a judge, uh, what's to stop the rules and regulations from being changed here? There's nothing, because... The environmentalists will not sit down with you at the table and come to any agreements or they won't talk about living up to their old agreements. They want, they just file suits and go through the courts and they pick their judges and they pick them to win. Uh, it was this morning, I think, about, I, heard one on the sage grouse and western watersheds and how they want all the cattle off the land yeah you know, you've been a very strong voice against the wolves over the last almost 20 years. And uh, we've seen a lot of things change on the landscape uh, with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service and also the fishing game and the re-restoration uh, of the wolves coming into the state of Idaho. Is it as bad as you anticipated or are there still some bright spots? Right now, it's bad. Um and um, there's another article with that paper that uh, 
we've talked about another state. Alaska, yeah. Yeah, Alaska, where they're trying to get another wolf or put on the endangered species list that is a different wolf. Well, when we did the wolf issue back in the 90s, they tried that. We had we had the timber wolf here. Right. We used to have them. Right. It is against the law to interject one endangered species on top of another endangered species. Now this has happened twice in Idaho. Now it. It has killed off the timber wolves, and it has killed off the caribou in northern Idaho because they were both on the list before before these were brought in. G- give me a short answer to this, and boy, there's going to be a lot of people that will pick up and hammer me for mentioning this. How do we revolt against this? How do we, the people, get our voices heard? How do we get our elected officials to stand up and fight for us instead of uh, doing some back uh, door deals behind us? How do we absolutely tell the government this is our land and you will not tell us what to do? First, we have got to realize what the heck's going on and then when we realize what's going on we have to we have to start using the court system we we have to start doing what the environmentalists are doing and i have tried to get the attorney general's office to start filing suits i don't care what it is but make them spend money make them spend money and our politicians need to get behind this. This is not a wolf issue. The wolf is a tool. The sage grouse is a tool. The spotted owl was a tool. The salmon was a tool. All these things, they use one thing and then another one and then another one. And after the wolf, there will be something else. Absolutely. Jack Euler, dear friend on the program this morning, and uh, we'll have a wrap-up with Jack in just a moment. Don't forget your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you with the best in tires at their big, big tire sale. Yes, tires like the Eclipse, the Ultra Z900, the Open Country AT, Wildcat AT2, all of these tires on sale now. Stop in and check out the custom wheels, some of them on sale. And, of course, don't forget get the best in brake value. Mm, the best in brake service, along with front end alignments, shocks and struts, batteries, but always the best of service. They really take care of you. Stop in and see Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Poline and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland and Burley. The best. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. Real quick, what did you think, uh, about this filming and uh, possible permit required to shoot pictures. I mean, come on, Jack. Well, it, it's control again, and if that happens, the BLM's going to pick up on it, and we're going to be shut off in public lands. I've been in meetings with people that say the the public lands are not being managed the way they should be by the Forest Service and the BLM, and they should be under state control. And this came from the guy that's over the Forest Service um, from the University of Idaho. I could never understand, and it goes back to when you and I, and I've only got a minute left, so keep your answer short on this. Uh, when we had Cowboy Country, our television show, man, the idea of having to file for all these different permits to film on certain places and everything and, and pay through the nose for that on our public land. I know it. And uh, what what were we trying to do? We were trying to promote those those places. That's right. We were giving them advertisement free, but all we had to do is turn the camera on, but they wouldn't let us until we had all the permits and paid the permitting fee that they required. And, that. and the other thing is, too, they'd make us wait and wait and wait and wait until it wasn't feasible. That's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I got to run, but uh, I absolutely thank you for stopping out and talking to this uh, issue regarding three big stories about Alaska, Wyoming, and also Wisconsin uh, with uh, regard to the wolves and how they're trying to change the rules again. 
and in favor of the environmentalists. Tomorrow on the program, don't forget we've got uh, Mr. Education Expert Kyle Olson from back in Michigan. We've got Brian Fairchild. Don't miss that. Former CIA operative talking about the uh, extreme Muslim problem uh, that's going on not only in the Middle East, but right here in our United States. Bert Stevenson, former representative, is going to talk about water. He's coming on tomorrow, along with a lot of other great folks. Zeb at the Ranch, the way things were, the way things ought to be. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8.06.